Welcome back on this Thursday. It's a good time to be on planet Earth. Why? Because the Aintree Grand National Festival is back with us. No, we didn't go, did we, in 2020? It was all virtual, but we are indeed back. No Tiger Roll in the big one on Saturday. We'll see him a little bit later in the bowl. Unbelievable scenes. And we are going to be with you Friday, Saturday as well. Cannot wait. What sort of a mood are we going to be in come Saturday? We'll be celebrating everything about our good game. Great to have you with us in the pursuit of winners. Uh, ain't you indeed losers? If the exchange is your thing laying on along the way, that's our sponsor. It is, of course, Betfair Exchange. You'll be learning all about that this afternoon. If you're not so familiar with it, why not give it a play? Uh, we've, we've got a great panel for you, that is for sure. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook Live, get your selections in. We've got plenty of time in between the races to chat away. Some shorties coming your way. Five races for you this afternoon. Amateur riders back joining the party as well. Superb stuff. And that's a great link for the man who joins me on my left, Charlie Post. What, amateur rider? <laughs> 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 I tell you what, so it begins. I'm like, the... <laughs> so this is the this is the sort of show it's going to be. And yeah. loads, of, loads of banter we'll be having. We've been warming up nicely in the office. We're in good form today. But Posty, you, you you've now got a massive foot in the point to point industry. Yeah. That's was that's where I was going. That was, with your, this. That was your tenuous link. Yeah. Yes, but, former yeah. former top jump jockey, of course. Grand National was not really your race, was it? You were no. close to a ride in it. We were yeah. talking about your record over the national fences. You said <laughs> you're like I think you fell at Beecher one year, didn't you? And yeah, I went down like a torpedo there one year. Full of excitement, a young man riding a horse called Mark Mann for Richard Lee. And he was a bit straight back, was Mark Mann. You had to keep going forward on him. And we saw a long one at Beaches, and he went down like a torpedo. And, and like, I laid there in the quiet, just waiting, you know, as you do, waiting for the noise to go. So, you know, oh. there's n nothing else coming on top that can kick you or stand on you. And it went silent. And then from the widest part of the track, Dave, all you could hear was, Ah, oh, my... Head <laughs> and up rose Mick Fitz. You know, there's a come down as well. Yeah, I mean, he was on the wide outside, but somehow he got a kick in the side of the head. And there was a few of us that come down and walked back to the ambulance. And he took the old helmet off and had a big red hoof print on the oh, side of his face. You know, so just pumped for the action. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. The first time I went uh, to watch uh, the national, I, re I remember seeing the young Irish guys coming back in. You know, who, who'd pulled up in the race or something like that, and they were in tears and stuff. You know, such a big occasion for them. You know, it, riding over the national fences for a jockey is the pinnacle of. of, of yeah, look, it's, it's one of those things that you, you want to tick off, and it's it's a massive buzz being involved going round over those fences. They're unique. You don't get many chances to to have the opportunity to ride over them. So yeah, you have to savour it, and, and it's a it's a pretty exciting time. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got the Hunter Chase, of course, coming up. First race of the week over the national fences. Back. Trading for us today and giving us loads of confident winners is Tom Collins. TC? Hello, how are we? The only man that can get away with wearing a hooded top <laughs> on a live yeah. show. You don't do that on Sky on a Saturday night, do you? Who wouldn't be having no, that? I'll ditch the suit for this show. Just go with the hoodie. It's all calm, collective. Get the winners in. That's all we need, Dave. I guess we're still in lockdown, aren't we? He's not got tracksuit bottoms on, I can tell you that. Much. <laughs> I tell you, he's, he's, he's only got half jeans. a pair of jeans on, though, the amount of holes in them. <laughs> TC, confident? We've got some nice plays on, on the way for everyone today? Yeah, always confident. There's been only five races today, but um, yeah, confidence is high. We're going to get a few winners, so uh, uh, let's see how it goes. That is the motto. Absolutely delighted to have TC back with us, as I am the man joining us again from Dublin. It's nice that he's back on the show. It's Barry Orr. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are we all? We're absolutely buzzing, Barry. You know, we said, didn't we, over Christmas, I can't wait until we get back to Aintree because, OK, the Cheltenham Festival will be over. We know that's the mecca, really, for jump racing fans. But we didn't have Aintree last year, did we? We know we're sort of coming out of things a little bit, don't we? The sun is shining a little bit more. It's all good. Yeah, hard to imagine over four million of us sat around and watched a cartoon Grand National last year. <laughs> so it really makes you appreciate the real thing this time around, doesn't it? It's a fantastic race. The race that stops the world. I think it's fair to say that most, uh, it's the most popular race in the world. It's watched everywhere, and uh, rightly so. E even though, even allowing for, you know, the modification to the fences, in my opinion, have just made it better. I don't think they've made it any worse. Okay, listen, it's great to have Barry on the way. A great wood is our charity of choice for the month of April, thanks to Barry Markarovsky and Darren Hughes as well. The charities have really been prospering. 
And uh, listen, a Barry will be playing in every single race. You don't have to do it. That is safe gambling is the motto here. We're just enjoying the sport. That's what we're going to do here on Racing Bows Live. As you well know, you seasoned viewers out there, you make the show. And I believe with plenty of time in between races, we'll be hearing from lots of you today. We've already got a couple up on the screen. Oh, well, there we can see. OK, Evan Nirenberg. That was a potential curveball off the bat, <laughs> wasn't it? First one. Good to, good to have you, Evan, opening the show. Yes, Kills is off the mark already. Good pick in a competitive race. I thought the Shunter would win, of course. You're talking about the opener, the novice chase that has run already. And Protector at one, didn't he, of course, for Team Skelton. Uh, it was because, of course, it was a grade one action. We're starting off, we've got grade ones all over the place. Protector at one. And Kills is in the office, actually, isn't he? Got loads of stick Kills did over, you know, Cheltenham. He's, he's trying to pick out the big prices and stuff and all that sort of thing. He's off to a flyer. And we could hear him through the door, couldn't we? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's not, he's not like just next door. He's a fair way down. And, and, and like you say, it was like he was sat in here with us. But uh, it was a good pick, wasn't it? First time after the wind operation for yes. the all-conquering skeleton operation. Horse and they got looked like he'd be a marsh horse, didn't he? It just Definitely. didn't go his way. But yeah. yeah, 17 seconds above standard or roughly there. So, so it's a blustery day up at Aindry. It's always a bowling green there. We'll get, we'll get Charlie's uh, you know, outlook on the ground after that. But they have chucked the water on. Evan, let's hope that's covered you. Yeah, Kills is going to have a good week. I can feel it. And Thomas Irish HD joins the show. Protect rat, you beauty. Let's hope that isn't the first and last winner over the three days, absolutely. It, I don't know, it, it's a strange festival entry, isn't it? Because everyone concentrates, rightly or wrongly, everyone, the gaze is always on children. It's always been like this. And then you go up to entry and you see horses that have run really well at the festival. They maybe had a hard race, I would think. Uh, that Billaway is a classic favourite. Looks like he's had a, a hard race in the Hunter Chase. Yeah, he had a very hard race, didn't he? he battled all the way to the line, drew clear um, with, with the eventual winner in the, in the Hunters. And... Now it comes out today and people are going to back him because he's got the best recent form in the book. But it's just how much did that take out of Billaway? Um, it, it's a very interesting quandary, isn't it? Whether you back a fresh horse um, or if you back a horse that's taken up every race this year, especially at Cheltenham. Uh, one thing is for certain, though, the British should beat the Irish this week. So fingers crossed. Hey, hang on a minute. They've got the B team coming over. And I don't mean to be dis <laughs> disrespectful Dave, we've got to, to take the wins. The we have but, to take the wins. But we've got the entry hurdle, of course, over two mile four. Who wins that? Will it be Blackmore and De Bromhead again? Let us know. Of course, the 40 runners for the National are in. Set secret reprieve. Second reserve fancied by so many. The Welsh Grand National winner. Doesn't look like he's going to get a run at this stage. So, Barry, the 40 are known to the public. A couple of questions that I'd like to ask our viewers, and we'll kick this off with Barry. What SP is Cloth Cap, the current favourite, and he's going to go a favourite, isn't he, for the National? Unless he's withdrawn, of course. I mean, what price is he going to go this, Barry? Is he going to drift, or are you one of those that think the punting army will come in and drive him below 3-1? to one? I certainly don't think he'll go below 3-1. to one. I know he's a stone well in, <clears throat> and he's been back from all sorts of prices down to... His current price of four to one, the Betfair Sportsbook paints six places to each way punters, but there's a host of horses around them that will attract money. And the bookmakers will want to try to level up their books a bit by laying the favourite. It's such a once in a year race, the Grand National for punters, that they look a four to one and it represents no value whatsoever. So they don't mm. back it. We've seen it in previous years with Tiger Roll as well, the same thing. Tiger Roll, the year he won in 2019, he was a winning result for most bookmakers. They just couldn't lay him because the general public don't play at those prices. You have Burrow Saint in there, who's an 8-1 to chance, continues to track support. Manila Times for Rachel Blackmore. Mm. Everyone knows her now off the back of Cheltenham. She could be the real steamer in the race. She's 9 from 10 on the Betfair Sportsbook. <laughs> Any second now for Ted Walsh, 10-1. to one. Kimber Light Candy has seen money for that at 10-1. to one. A Magical Light. A mare that I fancy to run a big race is 16 from 20. So a whole host of horses being backed around. The general public and Joe Public, who bet once a year, will not be back in cloth cap at four to one, that's for sure. Fascinating, isn't it? Because after Kelso, when he won uh, their Premier Listed chase, he bo boomed all the way down. We saw the handicapper had given him a stone posty well in. All of a sudden, we were looking at a potential five to two shot. I don't think this is the early 1900s that's happened. But Barry's just tempering enthusiasm now. I guess with people not on track and the betting shop still not open, they're going to be... Like Barry says, looking for a bit of value. I'd, I'd say without doubt. I mean, I, I'd, I'd struggle to see him going off shorter than four to one. Do you, do you think or not? No, I'm not convinced. No, no, I'm not really? sure. Let's see what to, to, uh, what our viewers think. Listen, we'll be revisiting this one. Keep coming in with your selections. What price does Cloth Cap go <clears throat> in the national? Is he your winner? Get your one, two, three, four. It's always a top four in the national. Do you value at four to one or not? I th I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I have got him in an okay position. And 
I just think he ticks every single box. He ticks everything. But is it, I don't know, that's an interesting question, isn't it? For backers of any horse, you know, you think something's going to win, but what price should it be? I mean, he's not valid at four to one. I think that's no. just, that's realistic because how can you back a horse at four to one with so many questions in the race? He's never run entry, never run over Grand National fences. The Grand National is a race that's hardly ever won by uh, a favourite, for, for example. The trends, though, he ticks all the trends. Yeah, every I, I, read, I read the, the trends in the race in post. Kev Morley does a great and, piece, and yeah. He ticks every single box. He does. Yeah, it's not to say that he won't win, no. of course. It's just and he's owned by Trevor hunter. Hemmings. Yeah. It's the John Joe team. Yeah. Everything's right. Tom Skoo, bred to win a national. Well, and I spoke to John Joe during the week, and, and like, as it, understandably, he said, well, if, if he's ever going to win it, it'll be now. It couldn't have gone any better, cloth cap for him. Does he win? What price does he go off? Let us know your national fancies. We'll be delighted to have this debate. OK, but we must open up the show. It's the babies coming out, the juveniles uh, in the 220. And Barry, this has had a, the look of a match about it. We've got the Triumph second here, Adagio. He's not favourite, though. Mon Morales. Yeah, Mon Morel obviously has yet to win a grade one. That's something that Adagio has done in, in Chepstow. He's a grade one winner. He's currently 288, uh, second favourite behind uh, Mon Morale, who's 1.90, and it's 18 bar to two of them. So like you say, it looks a dead match for the win purposes. And I was going to lay Adagio just at 288. I just thought he was a lay at that price. I think Cheltenham suits the horse and a grinded track like Chepstow suits him. I'm not so sure a speed track like Aintree's going to suit him. Mon Morale, there was a bit of concern about him on the ground. But after the first race, the money did come from his 1.90. Now, he had been odds against when I checked earlier on. He was 208, so he's nearly 11 to 10 against. So the money has come from no ground concerns there now. Obviously, it seems they've put plenty of water on. So I'm going to lay a Daggio. Uh, I'm going to look to lay it at 288 so, uh, or, or less. So we'll take 50 quid of the backer's stake. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a price maker here, please, uh, Tom. Mm -hmm. um, he's 29292 at the moment. But I'm going to put in to lay him at 288 and take 50 quid of the backer's stake. And that's going to go over onto the blue side, the back side, because we want someone to come in and back that horse with us. He's 288 now, uh, I see, for a couple of hundred quid there. So we should get matched. Uh, I think we should get matched. So happy just to leave that up for now. At 288, a layer of Adagio. I think Mama Ral has a chance at 5 and 20. She's done nothing wrong. She could go off in front. She's the seven pound mare allowance. Mm. She could run into a place. And John Locke could take a big step forward. Mm. So happy to be laying at Daggio. I just don't think this track is going to suit him. He's been on the go for a while. And uh, Mama Ral, obviously, big, big chance. Yeah, I'm with you, Barry. Mama Ral for me. Uh, again, I think Adagio on the book should be favourite. But this is Aintree, isn't it? And I'm with Barry. Uh, six horses have won coming from the Triumph in the past decade out of 21. Six horses have won. So, it, listen, it, it, it can be done. Of course, uh, a Defi de Soy, et cetera. There were loads of money for a Daggio as well. He has won on good ground. But Mon Morale, I think, I don't know, I just believe in this horse a lot. And there's not a lot between them on form, as we know, through horses like Nassalan, a, a Duke of Condicut, who, the, who was, uh, you know, an Alan King horse, <laughs> not a stable star, but just gives uh, the edge to Mon Morel. And where do you sit with this, uh, uh, Charlie, having sat out of the Triumph? They were never going to go to Triumph, obviously, you know, with such uh, connections, who are on a quick race double, we should say. Same as Protector. He is viewed as next year's chase. I think he's a Rolls Royce, this horse. I completely agree. As in, um, you know, it's all about looking for a, a potential star, isn't he? And Adagio is very admirable. He ran a super race in, in the mm. Triumph, but he has shown before he'd been beat by Doffelcoat earlier on in the season. Like, he, he is vulnerable to a top-notcher, isn't he? And, and we're looking at... It's whether you take the view that Mon Morale is that, that he's a potential top-notcher. If he has a weakness, then I'd say Adagio is well able to capitalise, but I, I very much am a, a Mon, Mon Morale fan. The, the one I would give a mention to, just an each-way play, is... Harry Skelton was quite keen on John Locke before. I spoke to him before racing. He, you know, he's, he was, I think he was nearly the best flat horse of these. <laughs> he ran a nice enough race in the Adonis. And I presume the theory here is that they're thinking, look, we're, we're going to run in good races with this horse because if he wins one, well, we'll take it. And if not, he's going to be a novice for next year anyway. But ha like Harry Skelton, he, 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 was quite, he, he, he sounded pretty positive about John Locke. So if, if there was something that was going to get in the mix by the top two, maybe he might be the one. I couldn't find a maiden that had won this, but when Barry mentioned uh, John Lott there, he was ex Khalid Abdullah, wasn't he? We'll get to TC because I know you're a fan of this horse on the yeah, level, yeah. aren't you? And Tom knows all about him. I couldn't find a maiden that had won it. And, and this sort of struck me a little bit as when you hear this classic 
a sort of trainer talk saying, well, if he wins one, let's let's you know make it a big one. Otherwise, we've still got the novice status for next year. That's definitely what's I can happening. See him, yeah. I can see him running a tidy race. Whether I can see him winning, I don't know. But he went well for a, quite a way, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Barry, go on. I was just going to say, he traded at 2.40, so sub 6-4 to four in the Adonis. He travelled so well, mm. and when they kicked away from him, he didn't get a hard race. I'm sure he's going to improve for that mm. run significantly, but he did travel so well in the Adonis, and that did pique a lot of in-running punters' uh, uh, mind to, to back him so short. TC, give us a final line on John Locke. Yeah, well, I fancied him in the Adonis, and I thought he was going best of all, um, coming around the bend. He just seemed to flatten out. Um, close home. We were in that day, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, we were. And I was getting a bit excited. I wasn't <laughs> saying any words, but I was getting excited. Um, I, look, I think he's got a, plen- a, got a big race in him. I think he's a very talented horse. Uh, maybe he just needed that run after 140 days off. Um, whether he's good enough to beat Mon Morale and Adagio, I doubt it, but I wouldn't be giving up on him. And if anyone's backing him at 16 to 1, then, I mean, there are far worse 16 to 1 shots running today. It's, it is that sort of day, isn't it? I think, you know, Barry's got some lay radars for you a little bit later on, whereas not wanting to go in for the slightly shorter ones. We mentioned uh, the Philly 5 and 20. Muscle brush, sharp track. She was ex- smart Prescott. We know she stays. She is a likely pace angle, I think, post, isn't she? Without doubt. I mean, look, she, she, they're, they're going to keep it simple with 5 and 20. And, and she's admirable, isn't she? And you can't knock her race record. I mean, for me, I, I, I wouldn't be reading so much into comparing Muscleborough to Aintree personally, you know, as, as from a track angle, as in Muscleborough is incredibly sharp, normally related with, with reasonable ground as well. As, I just think at Aintree, some, like, they can get racing early at Aintree, the ground, as Barry's alluded to already, is often watered heavily, and it is a long way up the home straight. Like you, yes, you need the ability to jump and travel and have zip around Aintree to be in the position, but you have got to be able to see it out as well. And I'm not saying five and twenty can't do that. I'd just be wary of going form round Musselburgh. Definitely going to translate to Aintree if that makes sense. Really interesting because you hear so often, don't you? with Liverpool in mind that if a horse is going to get three mile anywhere in a championship race, it will be at Aintree. Uh, but from a jockey's perspective... But it's like, again, you, you hear all these, like the, the great jockeys of the past going on about the King George. Because again, the, 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 oh, if you're going to get three mile, it'll be around Kempton. Yeah. Yet you speak to any jockey and they'll say, you have to be able to stay to win a King George as well. You know, gallop they go. It, and, it, it, yeah. Relentless pace. And, and again, this is top level racing round Aintree. You still got to see it out. There's no doubt you've got to see it out. And, and it's also often a, a massively long run from the back of the last hurdle, probably a furlong and a half or more, with these juveniles, youngsters. They've they, they got to finish off well as well. Mm, with tactics in mind, TC, mm. it's quite an interesting race, isn't it? Because Adagio hasn't shown a tendency to lead thus far. But however, you know, everything that Barry's expecting, thinking this might be one to take on, you have to think they're going to be a bit more positive with him. Yet we've got Mon Morale, who's shown a liking to get on with it. I'm sure that he'll probably take a lead. He looks extremely well, by the way. Just mm, looks lovely, doesn't it? On his way down. 5 and 20, as we mentioned. But Midland Park Racing have also got Paros in the race, who likes to get on with it. Yeah, Paros was ridden very aggressively last time. Uh, was that a muscle bro as well? I think it was, yeah. He was ridden, ridden very aggressively and he looked a completely different horse last time to his prior two efforts. Um, I think the, the Midland Park horses will go on. Um, John Locke, Mon Morale sitting behind. Maybe Adagio in behind Mon Morale, just stalking main, main market rival. Um, it's an interesting race because 5 and 20 may well quick, uh, kick, off the front, or kick off the front. She has plenty of form over two miles on the flat, one mile six on the flat, so she needs further than this, really. Um, I think she'll go make the race of it early in the straight, um, and then Mon Morale and Adagio will play their hands and see who's the stronger in the final furlong or two. Um, I think Mon Morale will come out on top, though. You do as well, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a, basically a clean sweep, pretty much, on the panel for Mon Morale. Barry uh, is, of course, taking on the Triumph second Adagio. OK, the Triumph is an interesting race, wasn't it? Of course, uh, t- t- we mentioned uh, the Adonis Tritonic, so disappointing. Well, Bazzana here was yeah. also... How good a race was the, uh, the Triumph, do you think, Dave? It's always this race where we tend to find out, isn't it, basically? Uh, I mean, obviously, we didn't I mean, have it last year, but uh, Defi Desoy followed up, didn't he? What else followed up in this race? We have a dream, a recent one. It didn't go to Pentland Hills, Hills, of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it can be done, but... Uh, Apple's Jade, of course, she was beaten in a triumph. Zarkanda, who was Paul Nichols, one of two Paul Nichols winners in this, he, he he was a triumph winner that followed up as well. So, I don't know. You tend to find out sort of like October, November. If you remember when Goshen came back, you know, like everyone was a bit like, well, he's going to be the one. All mankind wasn't that great. Mm. You know, Botox has horses like that, but it it did work out well, didn't it? We saw all mankind went and did. Let's get some more viewer interaction on the screen. Who's joining the party? Elliot Hackney. Aye, aye. Elliot comes to the party. Come on, a dear Daggio. Hello. <laughs> Hello, RP Live team. Good to know you're watching, hackers. Former 
part of the team, old hackers was. A terrible tips that I have to say. <laughs> Let's hope so. Dreadful. <laughs> so, he used to. I tell you what, he was quite funny. He always, he'd always come in, and on these shows, he'd always say, "What's the buzzer today? What's the buzzer today?" And uh, he, he'd often hear him screaming if, if a tip had won or anything like that. So Adagio, it is for Elliot as well. So he's going against Barry. Great to have that interaction out there. Good to have you on. The triumph winners are fair, also. Quilixi, I say, he looks like he's got yes. a lot of scope. Yeah, I thought it was all right. I thought it was. Pretty decent, Don't you, then, yeah, the, the cheer of the week almost came on Friday when Barry Orr had been punting this Cheveley Park horse out all through the... It, I mean, you knew sort of coming to the last, it was in the bag, Barry. I mean, the winner of the Triumph, he's decent, right? Yeah, he's a fair horse, I have no doubt about it. He's a real stare, though. You'll see him stepping up in trip next mm. year for sure. Like, he, he, his best his best distances will be well beyond the Triumph Hurl of two miles. And I just thought, like, obviously, Adagio has finished second. It's a fast, diminishing second. Uh, the first, uh, uh, Willie Mullins' horse, who they just got, had got out yeah. of France, Hort, uh, Coulet. Um, I just don't know. I just questioned the form. Zanahir didn't perform, obviously, as he was expected to. So I just questioned the form of the Triumph Hurl. But like you say, we're about to find out. So, uh, But that, that's one of the main reasons I'm taking on Adagio as well. Yeah, this is the first horse running from the Triumph. OK, so what are we, uh, that was only 20 days ago as well. So how much do you buy into the break between Cheltenham and Aintree? There's a great advert there for in your members club watching back your video replays. It's one of the greatest tools that we have here at the Racing Post. Trust your eyes, it's often there staring you in the face, isn't it? Okay, so Barry, uh, they're just about to jump off. What price is this going to go off then? Mon Morale. At the evens now, 2.02, 2.8. Um, Adagio, 16, now 5 and 20, 20 John Locke. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, evens and 7 to 4. Wow, OK, so slightly on the drift. There's been loads of support for Adagio and, and Team Pipe. I'm just trying to see if Dave Pipe has won this. He, uh, he has his first one in the, in the last 10 years, and off they do go then. Good luck wherever you've played in the 220s. Not going to be any hanging about. We were expecting a fair old pace, and it looks like it is 5 and 20 who's gone on. Paros in the same colours, the second colours of Midland Park Racing. Donald McCain leading uh, Nicky Henderson at the minute. Mon Morale got a lovely sit in third. Love, love the way this all settles and goes about it. Right on his back, the target for Adagio. And then out the back, the two skeleton runners, the main is Carlos Felix, who we didn't mention. Uh, tailed off on its hurdling debut behind 5 and 20 at Musselburgh. Better than that, we know that on the flat. And John Locke, the other maiden at the back as well. All over it, OK. Charlie Post, initial thoughts? Initial thoughts, it's fairly, fairly straightforward, isn't it? 5 and 20 is taking him along as predicted. Paros following, they all jump the first OK. We we'll see him over the second now and all seems fine. Like you say, Mon Morale has the ideal sit, doesn't he? He's coupled to aim at. He's in a lovely ry rhythm, relaxed away. Adagio stalking and John Locke following him through. Amazing, isn't it, TC? How you can see the stragglers out the back. I'm calling them stragglers because they are the two maidens, and they—you can tell, can't you? Even in, you know, at this top level, they are fiddling more than the winners, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. I mean, they don't have the same experience as most of these in front of them. Uh, all of these in front of them, in fact. Um, Mon Morale just bungled the second, but it's perfectly fine. Not, not a mistake at all. It's no surprise the way this race has panned out. Um, there are going to be no excuses for, for either of the two favourites either. So. Thank goodness 5 and 20 is in this race. If you're a fan of hers, she's opened up by about four lengths because we don't want these Mickey Mouse races, do we? And we certainly haven't had them the first two races at Aintree. The ground, just amazing, isn't it? When we get to Aintree, they don't race there that much. They come in for a bit of criticism through the winter, but it means we've got that bowling green to aim at. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, if you compare it to, say, Cheltenham, I, I spoke to quite a few of the jockeys being critical of the ground at Cheltenham. Is that right? Yeah, like needed a bit of help, like been over raced on and, and, and not in great nick, whereas Aintree, always beautiful conditions, but possibly a fraction over watered if you've got a, a good ground, fast ground horse, isn't it? OK, what's that then? Ooh. So we can see that. So yeah, no, it was all right. Barry zooming away. Oh, is he a little bit fiddly there, Monreal, Barry? I think he just stepped at that just a little, Monreal, but he's 1.94, 3.35 at Daggio. Monreal went odds on as soon as they jumped off, went into 193, has remained around that. Daggio 3.5, then 9.2, the one in front getting the freebie, 5 and 20, 16.5, John Locke, but odds on and hardening all the time, Mon Morale, 188 now. And we're approaching the business end of the race then on the far side. I said to Posty, I'm not very good with the railway fences at Sandown, am I? What's four out, three out and all that? We've not been at Aintree for a year, man. You have to tell me where the running is. <laughs> we're all right at the hurdles course, though. It's all fairly straightforward stuff, isn't it? You know, just they jump the last one down the back, run, running, the, running around the turn to turn in, level up three flights up the straight, isn't it? And this is where they're getting excited. TC, how's he going? I mean, Carlos Felix just threatening to make an imprint from the back of the field. Yeah, I think Paros 
is the only one that's slightly being niggled along. Um, at this stage, Monreal's still going lovely. Just looking to get up the inside of Paros here. Adagio's travelling well in behind as well. And the leader, 5-20, and 20, going very nicely out in front for Brian Hughes who's obviously seek, seeking that all-important winner after Harry Skelton rode the first winner on the car. Absolutely. The Jockey Championship, just a bit of Adrian, is continuing. This will be fascinating. Mon Morel, in his races this season, has shown a little bit of a greenness. Is he going to go on with it? And then the turbo kicks in. So Adagio's got about two lengths off him. Now they're coming to the second last. I think we can third say... Third last, third last. Third last. There we go. Thank goodness you're here, Posty. OK, 5 and 20 over it. What will she find? We know she takes Harry Compton had a little look for Adagio in between his legs. Here we're coming to the second out. He's a very, very nice animal this morning. Morale. Now he's got the stayer coming up against him, Adagio. It looks just maybe like the match is going to entail. Tom Scooter more confident as well, isn't he? As 5 and 20 gives way, then coming to the last. I'll tell you what, Mon Morel's really going to have to fight, but he has got that freshness about him. It's all on the last jump up and over they oh. go. Oh, Adagio walked through it. Does that mean Mon Morel sprints away, Posty? What are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at a very nice potential chasing star, aren't we? And, and it's going to be very exciting to see where he goes in the autumn. Oh. I, I don't think this was a scintillating performance, but he's got the job done well. And the further they're going, yeah. the further Woo! clear he's going. He's, he's hit the line it. very strong. Exciting prospect for the future. Gotta love that finishing effort. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. Adagio in second. Five and 20 comes home in third. John Locke promised still for next season. Maybe they'll even think about going back on the flat with him. We're not sure about them. And uh, Paros fell in a bit of a hole. Carlos Felix, another one for next season as well. But... We said we thought he was a Rolls Royce before, and I've spoken to Paul Nichols about this, as I know you have, Barry, as well. This is the real apple in Nichols' eye. Yeah, he certainly is. And they've been patient with the horse. They identified it. Definitely not a Cheltenham prospect. They picked their pots nice and easily, won so well in Haydock, and aimed him at Aintree. And, and this was his target. And, you know, planned well, well planned and well executed. He traded at a high of 5.7, would you believe, 9 to 2, the runner up. Uh, Adagio traded at a low of fives on for 353 <laughs> quid. So, yeah, just coming to the last, he made a mess of it, Tom Skew's mm. horse. But the winner, I don't think, even if he had jumped it well, I don't think he'd have got within mm -hmm. three or four lengths of the winner. He's really just, like you said, the turbo kicks in late on and he just pulled away. And regardless of that error at the last from Adagio, he was always going to do that. Finally, a horse that might beat the Irish at the Cheltenham <laughs> Festival. Right. We've got one. Uh, Tom Scoo, the, the body language of him there. Two out, you thought, right, this is Mon, Ram, uh, Mon Morel. He's going on the ground fine. He's in fact, he's made it look like it's good to firm, hasn't he? He's absolutely bounced off it. Uh, but Tom Scoo came back up into his saddle a little bit, didn't he? Just a bit of confidence in the air. And Yeah, I think he thought that he was going to have one go at Mon Morel after the last, didn't he? But... Harry Cobden saw a really good positive stride and you saw him commit to it. He got a great jump out of Mon Morel and Tom Scoo didn't, bungle the last and, and that's taken the horse's momentum away. As Barry said, I, I don't think it would have made the slightest bit of difference. He might have been a couple of lengths closer at the line than what it's finished off. I love to see this though, like a horse that... He's slightly workmanlike at times, isn't he? Yes. But the way the way he's hit the line, he, he's not nickels like that, Posty, is it? Because they often win on the bridle, and then yeah. they go, a little bit like Brave Man's Game, dare I say it, when they came to the big the, the big pot of Cheltenham, you know, he just melted a little bit. Massively, but, but you, you only look. We're looking at him now, and he's a big, scopy, like still quite a weak framed horse. Like he's got a lot of furnishing to do. You can understand why Paul has avoided Cheltenham this year with the future in mind. He's going to come back in a, a much bigger, stronger animal in the autumn. And, and chasing, you can see the way he jumps his hurdles. It's, it's, it's made for him. And, and yeah. Arkle next year, or so, you know, it, 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 it's very exciting. This is the first horse, mm. you know, non-Irish horse, shall we say, in your tent to follow for next year, TC, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I love that finishing effort. He, he was a length clear coming to the last. Great jump. I know Adagio obviously lost momentum um, and lost probably a length with the mistake, but he just drew clear. You've got to love how, that, how Mon Morales finished that race and... As Posty said, he looks a, a real nice chaser for next season. He could be very, very, very good. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm thrilled for Connections as well, who have, of course, won the first two races. John Hales, of course, uh, Jeb Mason, and Sir Alex Ferguson as well. Some of them, they got Clanders Oboe to come. And they could well. have a quick treble, absolutely. To, and I'll tell you what, there would also be a quick treble. This is why you've got to love this show, isn't it? It all develops as we're going on. Two horses that have skipped Aintree. Uh, uh, Cheltenham, sorry, have won the first yeah. two races at Andrew. Yeah. Clan de Zobo ticks that box as well. No, they're doing this clan, don't they? And I'm thrilled for them because Paul was... They know what they're doing. They avoid the Irish at all costs. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's quite simple. <laughs> was it uh, that I've seen uh, the, uh, at the Punchestown, a uh, champion hurdle, they put up a 100 grand bonus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. great to see that, isn't it? And Gary Moore says, yeah, come on, we'll have a go at it. Oh, with gosh, and that'll be, come on, this is more like it. Why on earth with the prize money out there? I mean, uh, the Irish National, for example, worth 400 grand, wasn't it? You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, 
That's just one British runner. I know that there are restrictions and stuff at the moment. It's been a bit more tough, but post, that's weird, isn't it? Well, it's not great to see. You, you want to see the competition on both sides of the sea and, and us going over and having a go. Um, there, I think there was a spell, like when Niche Market won. I think the, the, the British trainers won it a few years. Like they, they, they won it a few times in quick succession, yeah. but in recent times, it doesn't seem to be on anyone's radar. And, and, and like you say, with the prize money like that on offer, that, that's surprising. Yeah, it does. It goes against everything that we moan about, doesn't it? I know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, there we go. So, look, we're off and running here on RP Live. Great to have you along for the three days. Stick with us. It's going to be fast and furious, and we're going to have loads of fun as well. That's really what it's all about, especially at this time as well. Uh, okay, so keep your social interaction coming in. Let's get the viewer questions out there. Who of you amongst you napped Mon Morale today? Were you like Elliot Hackney and you went for a Daggio? <laughs> you, you did <laughs> Already say. Already chasing. Did, you did say. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I did say. It's, terrible, it? it's all fun and games, Elliot. We know you're out there. Now that he's not the boss anymore, we can, we can wipe the floor with him. It's nice <laughs> and easy. Uh, okay, great stuff. So we're off and running the four-year-olds there. That was special. That was special. Was it Arkell or would it be Marsh next year? Paul Nichols did hint that he might want to go up and trip Mon Morale. You sort of see that at the end of his races, can't you? And Carol Ann, 1971. I so want Tiger to win. Let's move on then, shall we? A great time, Carol, to indeed do so. Let's do it. Yeah, it is because it is, of course, the Betware Bowl. Um, this is one of those races, isn't it, where some, some greats have come here after running in the Gold Cup. Denman and Corto star beating in it from memory and, you know, they're the big two, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So we've got horses that are fresh and that have missed out the Gold Cup versus those that ran in the Ryanair and indeed in the Gold Cup themselves. Barry Orr, I guess it's been a bit of a battle all week, hasn't it, between Clanders Oboe, Jed Mason, Sir Alex Ferguson and, uh, and John Howes on a quick treble and waiting patiently to see who's going to go off as favourite. Yeah, well, it looks like Clanders Oboe is going to go off favourite. They're putting the cheek pieces on him for the first time, which for me is just a little niggle. Uh, obviously, he was uh, given six pounds to Secret Investor in Newbury in the Bedford Demon Chase, and he couldn't get by him. Uh, I, I'm just—he hasn't won this year. There's a few question marks about him for me. Waiting patiently, it's a horse I just can't warm to because we see so little of him. But when he does run, he, he runs remarkably well. But stable form as well would be a concern there. Native River at 6.4. I can't have him. Clondor Castle has been a springer in the race. Was as big as 10 when we first went up with this. Uh, he's into 13 to 2 now. And Mr. Fisher, he's been another springer mm. this morning. So they're back in plenty against the top of the market. But what I'm going to do, Dave, I'm going to take on Native River in the standard three places here. It's currently trading at 2.34. Uh, I just think... He had a very, very hard race in the, in the Gold Cup. You know, it, you wouldn't take a free bet him at any stage. He, he, he's beaten 30 lengths at the finish. He never got anything his own way. I just think he's going to be very, very uh, vulnerable around here to, to some other horses in this race. Most notably, obviously, the likes of Clan de Zobo, but uh, of the outsiders, Clan Daw and uh, Mas Mr. Fisher. So just going to take 50 quid out of him again. I'm going to be a price taker here, though, at 2.34. Happy to do that. If the whole order's not filled, it'll go over onto the other side and waiting for someone to come in and back up with us. So happy just to leave that up uh, for now if the whole order is not filled, Tom. And uh, I think that's the play. Lay Native River, very hard race in Cheltenham, and happy to take him on at that price, at 2.34, like 11 to 8 all day long. Mm, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, you can see it, can't you? He, he somehow ran on into fourth in the Gold Cup. It was at the back of the telly, wasn't it? Of course, he came and picked up Frodon for fourth place. Brave, brave effort. OK, let's get some more social interaction up on the screen before we go down the panel for the tips who joins the party. And Carl Wilkes says, I think people sleeping on Condor Castle. Very impressive, his latest run. I think he's a great each way bet. Should we give that a, a TC? Condor. Yeah, he was very impressive last time, wasn't he? Uh, wasn't he? And he, he'll definitely relish the conditions. It's just he's a handicapper for me. Um, a top-level handicapper, but a handicapper at that. And he's running a grade one race. I know it's not a very good grade one. This is probably a, a pretty poor grade one, to be honest, um, with, excuse, with reasons why you should doubt most of those at the head of the market. But it's going to take a massive career best, I think, for Clondor Castle to win. I can see the angle, um, but he's not for me. Yeah, he finished second first time out, didn't he, in the old row, and of course, so course form, flat tracks with him, basically, and he did finish third, of course, in the Peterborough, when he met a little bit of trouble behind Mr Fisher, I'm not sure, really, why Mr Fisher's not shorter, uh, so there we go, thank you for that social into the screen, uh, how do we see this going, I mean, before we talk about the most fascinating horse in the race, and I'm a bit surprised that Barry didn't take a view about him, because we just don't really know what we're going to get from Tiger Roll, TC, who's your play? I thought this was a horrible, horrible race to punt in, to be honest, because I could 
I could spend the next five, 10 minutes giving you negatives for all of these horses. Um, like I thought Clander Zobo threw the race away, the Demon Chase last time. Um, the fitting of the cheap piece is probably a plus, but uh, I, I don't like to see it. Waiting patiently hasn't won since I think 2018. Tiger Roll hasn't won a standard chase since 2017. Um, or 2016 even. Uh, Clondor Castle handicapper, uh, Mr. Fisher was pulled up at Cheltenham, was travelling really nicely. So I can see the angle with him, um, but I don't like to see a horse pull up at Cheltenham, especially after that bad mistake at the water. So I, I mean, I haven't punted in the race. If I was, was going to punt in the race, it would be Native River against Barry, um, purely just because I think he's a solid horse and Colin Tizard, run, uh, his horses often run well at Aintree. I think Ross Briley was telling me uh, Tizard's 10 for 30 um, in graded races um, at Aintree, which is very interesting indeed. And I know Native River had a hard race to finish fourth and he never got things his own way. But I think he's going to be able to lead today. And also, last time he ran at Aintree, after running at Cheltenham, he won here. Um, I don't think the quick turnaround for Native River is that bad a thing, personally. But then again, I'm not so strong in him that I want to be punting him. It's a race that's very tricky. I mean, the, the backing up at Aintree, though, that, I mean, you're talking about after the Gold Cup in March and then back in December. I think, wasn't it the season before he ran at Aintree? Um, it was the first groan of debate that we've had of yeah. the week when TC said Native River there. You went, in 2016, 2016, he ran in uh, the amateur riders race at Cheltenham, got beaten a length and a quarter by Manella Rocco and then came back out at Aintree um, and won the Mildmay by three lengths. Yeah, yeah. He, I, I agree with Barry. He's got a record of 1-1-3, one, one, Barry at Aintree, yeah. And John Joe Neal Jr. who gets back on uh, is one from one on him. Of course, that brings us to Ricky, uh, to Ricky Johnson. And his 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 uh, his departure from the sport, which which kind of took us by surprise, Posty, didn't it? You'd have said if this lad had won the gold cup, he'd have retired there and then. Because you you were thinking about the, I mean, a lot of jocks, you know, that are getting into their senior years. I'm trying to work out how to word this better. Have a horse to stick around for, don't mm. they? And with Dicky, it was getting a little bit light on numbers with that, wasn't it? With Philip yeah. Hobbs is. You know, it, it, his boss not having any obvious stable stars with deputy side and sidelines, uh, etc. Time, time Hill. Hill, Time Hill, Time Hill, who of course runs tomorrow Saturday. No, tomorrow Saturday. Sorry, in the yeah, States, yeah, yeah, yeah. Time Hill, yeah. I suppose Time Hill. Okay, that's one. Yeah, but I, I was trying to think. It's not. It was not like a Frankie Dettori thing. Do you remember with, with John Gosling on the flat? We had all these great horses that kept him in the game. And I just, yeah, I, I like. I mean, like he's. I think he's going to be booked in for a hip replacement ASAP. You know, I mean, we're we're talking about a guy that physically was in bits. It's been I mean, known that for some time. Like, it, racing you, circles. Even when I was riding, he had to come and have 30 minutes of sort of in, intensive stretching just to get through the day. He actually said what was interesting, speaking to him during the week, he thought lockdown and racing shutting down didn't help him. He said his body actually feels better when it's sort of continuously busy because a lot of people said, oh, it'll help Richard Johnson. He'll come back refreshed. And he was he, just on the tractor a lot, wasn't he? And he, he said it didn't help him at all. And I just think he, like... Yes, he had time, Hill, but I think if he'd have won the Gold Cup, that would have been his sort of fanfare moment to go out. Yeah. And as it was, typical Richard Johnson, he didn't want to take it away from anyone else, you know, so he didn't want to leave it till the last day at Sandown and take away from the champion jockey, whoever that might be, his moment. And, and then he didn't want to retire after the Gold Cup and take away from Manella Endo. And, and so he was thinking about everyone else and, and instead of himself. And I think he just thought in the end, well, Newton Abbott's, a local enough track to Philip Hobbs. Philip and Sarah Hobbs will be there. I can ride for them. And Thinking of everyone by the headline writers at the Racing Post at about <laughs> five o'clock on, on a yeah, Tuesday yeah, or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. It was testament to our editorial team that that was punted out so quickly for the next day. Shows you how quickly those front pages can change with the news. Uh, let's get some socials up. Oh, so no Dickie Johnson anymore. End of an era, isn't it? We'll get a word from Barry on that as well. Uh, and here's is Josh Forth coming on. I sort of get what Barry is saying with the non- Runner has never been out of the Native, Native River. River. <laughs> the non-runner. <laughs> and the non-runner has never been out of the top four in his chase career. It's because he never shows up. Native River has never been out of the top four in his chase career. He's a bl- if he won this, we'd all be standing up clapping, I think, after the effort in the Gold Cup. So, Josh, you're sticking with the Native. It's not paid off too badly in the past, is it? What else we got? Daniel Jepson comes along to the party and says, Hoping Mr Fisher wins myself. Love the horse. Let's stick with that then. This was one of my more hopeful plays of the Cheltenham Festival, the Peterborough winner in December. Uh, if you remember that, of course, he chased Alaho, didn't he? Nicky Henderson's uh, up and comer. I think we can still say that about the seven year old. He's been waiting to go up and trip this horse. They've always viewed him as a potential future Gold Cup horse. That's the question mark about him. I think, I think eight of the last nine winners of this had already won over three miles. 
So that's the question mark. And of course, he needs to get his jumping back in rhythm. Yeah, I think that's a big question mark, the jumping. Well, you, it went to pieces. It, well, it did, but it, 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 he left his legs in the water jump. Yeah. Let's come to you now, Posty, on this, because I, I was worried about, I mean, I, I thought just pull up there and then, you know. It was a brave effort to come back into it. It was. For me, I wish they'd do away with water jumps. I, I don't see they have any place in, in modern racing. For, it, it was supposed to be like a spectacle, wasn't it? But I think it's dated back to when we're going back to the hunting field and stuff like that. You know, yeah. They don't really have a place anymore. And you see horses, look, when they drop their back legs in them, it's not a pleasant spectacle. You, know? As in, you never and, know what they leave behind. Yeah, there. And it's kind of a bit of a trap. Yeah. The only thing I would say, I, I agree with you that it, it, it sort of unraveled because of the water and you could forgive him. This... The track, the Marmay track here is not the track to be coming back and getting your confidence at, you know, as in the, the, the fences come, they're big, they come very quickly. Yes, they do. So he'll have to be on his money right from the get-go. You, you, you wouldn't want him going and see him and being slow over the first couple because your chance can be gone very quickly. Well, I guess you could count that as where else have they got to go this season. I suppose you could go to Ireland with him or something like that, but Sandown, not totally sure about that. We're sort of running out of mileage on this jump season, aren't we? So look, I, I take that, but he was awful in the Paddy Bauer Gold Cup on Granny Hate. He was, he, he was wheel spinning on that. He looked beaten off the two fences. He came back and won the Peterborough. On his day, I still think this is a this is a top class also. And as Nicky has alluded to, he actually said in his comments in your member section of the paper today uh, that good ground is essential to to him well you know the Peterborough didn't which is funny that. as well because he's a Jeremy and, and normally they they are pre- like they're at their best on really testing conditions and so yeah it's interesting when yeah okay uh, so I like Mr Fisher I think he can bounce back and there, there is a bit of stable confidence about him coming back in his uh, mission so James McFadden comes along and says clan is a massive lay so again you're sort of I don't know, cheap pieces for Clan des Oboe. Let's get the tips and then we'll talk about Clan des Oboe. So TC, uh, not sure. Tentative Tentative Native River. Tentative Native River. Okay, so there's a bit of social love out there for that as well. Charlie Post. I'm going to go waiting patiently. I mean, a a trainer form is is a a concern, but... uh, it it, kind of, like, he smacks a horse that they're not quite sure where they're going with him, you know, as in he runs a lovely race at Kenton of the King George over three mile and then drop back to, to two mile and... Like he runs okay in, in a messy race behind first flow, and I just think flat track is, three mile is what he's all about. And, and isn't he just a maybe horse though? He, well, he definitely is. Yeah, I just can't. I don't see how anyone could be confident in waiting patiently. Like I'm not confident in any of these. Yeah, very true. He's actually That's four from point. seven on the left-handed track, but he's not run here since he got bottomed behind Min. Do you remember? Uh, it wasn't this race, was it? No, of course. Two it and was, a half mile check. It was indeed yeah. in the Melling chase, of yeah. course. Sometimes it's so hard to... It's, unlike Cheltenham, mm. getting between the Manifesto and the Mellings and all that sort of stuff and the Merseys, and it can be a bit difficult up here at Aintree. But uh, waiting patiently, listen, on his day, absolute rocket of a horse, isn't he? And coming in fresh again, so he's got that nice angle about him as well and, and Brian Hughes I think will get him into a right rhythm but that day when he ran at Aintree I don't know he's, he's just a horse now you know that he's going to go off short and four to one don't he and he's it's not that sort of horse for me at the minute but I, I, I'll be no surprise whatsoever if he looks a very big danger throughout this race up until the final fence what about Tiger Roll then we've not even mentioned him come on what on earth is he doing this race Barry Orr tell me why the Tiger isn't running in the National I'd say he could run in next year's national, couldn't they? And they'd want to give the handicapper a good sighting of him in a grade one. Mm, no, do you think that is... Oh, this he's, not, is he's not running in the national because the owners are stubborn. I mean, that's, that's it. Isn't it just a massive disappointment that you're yes. not I mean, 100%. for a grand national this year? Having Why? missed it last year. Why would you not? Why would you not go for him? I don't care about the mark. You can. The horse is good enough to run well off the mark. We've seen that in recent seasons. Silly battle. Let's get Michael hand. O'Leary on the phone. TC needs to talk some sense into him. I mean, he's got a flight to. Yeah, it's just silly. Go, to Greece he's going to be. Not, he's not going to fly. He'd be declined. He'd be, he'd, he'd, delay him. He'd try and get on the Ryanair flight. They'd be like, absolutely no chance. We heard what you said about us. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is silly though, isn't it? It's silly. Like everyone wants to see him in the Grand National. They, the owners, want to see him in the Grand National. But they're not running there because they're stubborn on the mark. Do you know, there's an element of me that come, I, I actually have just given up caring. Like, as in, I absolutely love the horse, boring, but he's just boring it? every have year. Have you not goes, been goes like on. me in that people that that get interested in jumps racing for the Cheltenham Festival, and then especially as Barry alluded to at the top of the show, it's the race that stops the nation. It is at the Grand National. That's really when your phone starts going for people you've not heard yeah, in a couple yeah. of years. I've had it all this week. But also to explain why Tiger Roll is not running in the race. And if, it's getting tiring. And it's getting harder and harder. The thing is, if he's in the race, not only, one, is it great for everyone who loves racing, but it's great for everyone outside of the sport. And we want to draw, draw people back into racing, you know, people that may, young people as well, who know Tiger Roll because they've seen previous Grand Nationals. It may be the one race that people outside of racing watch every year. Mm. 
and Tiger Roll is the, the face of the national. Get him in the national again, draw in a bigger crowd, get more people into racing. I, there isn't a negative. I'm going to play devil's advocate. What happens if it goes wrong? Okay, but what? It's always one. <laughs> but what do you mean? What do you mean by goes wrong? Well, like you know, like the, he, he takes a tumble or whatever. You know, as in I like, mean, but isn't that the risk you take by putting a horse? Of course in? it is. I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. I'd love to see him in he's, the national. It, you know, it, as he's in, pulled up a couple of times and that sort of stuff, and then most notably back in November, of course, when he came back onto British shores. But what did we make of the cross country chase? I mean, you, it's not it's not hard to say that was the worst race of the week. <laughs> you know, at the festival, I mean, worst quality wise. You know yeah. what I mean? Easy's land, the, the hot pot that he had to beat probably didn't go on the ground. He might have had another run into if they could. Some neck, who is uh, a reserve uh, for the national. On Saturday, Ugh, it, I don't, I don't know. Uh, we've not heard a lot of love so far for Tiger Roll, and is that because people are like, what are they doing, experimenting with this eleven-year-old, the people's horse, if you like? Well, it, for sure, <laughs> as in, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I think with Cheltenham, we can say it was a scintillating performance from an, an emotional point of view. It's probably the best feel-good week, race yeah. of the week, yeah. absolutely. But did, what, what does the form amount to? I would imagine probably not a whole heap. Agreed. Yeah. What price would he have gone off for the national last year, all being if this pandemic well. hadn't have come and joined us? Short than four to one. Yeah. Short than four to one. <laughs> Short than four to one. Short than cloth cap. What price does cloth cap go off on Saturday? Keep your views coming in. We've not had them yet. We've not had any, of course, we've not had any one, two, three, fours of the national. Should we, should we do this now? What, what do you wins? think of Clander's oboe, though, first of all? You... Oh, we haven't. You're right. I should say that. We should that. probably just chat about him. Uh, uh, as, as a favour, you've got to take him on. I think the pieces don't inspire confidence, but uh, I'm sure someone out there will be saying, when Nichols puts on cheap pieces for the first time or something like that, I don't know. But Do you think he ducked it behind Secret Investor? I Definitely. I thought he had, the race was there. I just thought it was a certainty that he'd go by. Yeah, he yeah. was giving yeah. him six pounds, wasn't he? Secret Investor, the stable mate in the Denman chase. Uh, but we've seen two races down at Aintree uh, starting off the week. Two horses that skipped Cheltenham. And back in the day when he first got into racing, it was don't back Cheltenham horses at the Grand National meeting, you know, because they've had those hard races. Of course, we've got the Hunter chase coming up. Bill away, put his heart on his sleeve, didn't he, up the run in there, trying to get the best of Paul at bay in a right old tussle. He's going to be short in the Hunter chase. Are you with him or not? Some more social interaction coming up. You love to see it. Let's get it on the screen. Paul Holden comes in. Great to have you with us, Paul. Tiger Roll, no chance. I remember Paul Holden messaged me before the Cheltenham Festival and went, the lay of the festival, lay him for a place. So never to be... Tiger. Like, can't keep a good man down, <laughs> yeah, Paul, can uh, you? He's on the combat uh, trail. I remember he was yeah. on the floor as well. He was like, how did that possibly win? I mean, it, in the cross-country chase, at halfway, you were like, he's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. This is unbelievable. Because, of course, you were there. What? No crowd. It was the one race of the week as well where you really missed the crowd, wasn't it, of yeah, all the races. Yeah. Even the Gold Cup. Uh, that was the, you know, the ovation he'd got. What was it like? Did you indeed get out of your chair? Did you go and clap him for everyone? Yeah, if, uh, walking back down the, the, the walkway. I mean, it, it's one of those where it, it's bittersweet, isn't it? Because it was an unbelievable as a race fan to see him go and do that after looking. And I, for one, fully thought that he, his, he was done at the job, you know, as in that he, he retirement beckoned, beckoned. But then it was also, like I say, so you were, you were elated, but then you're thinking that it's one of those what if moments. Because if there'd have been. 50, 60,000 people there, it would have taken the roof off the place. You know, it'd have been one of those moments where you'd be like, that was something special. Yeah, I mean, I mean, racing has lifted the spirits, hasn't it, throughout this lockdown pandemic, of course, the COVID situation that we have. However, that, you know, that was one race, I think, where we were like, we're just papering over the cracks until people come on back. OK, what else have we got? Duru Ixuru. Oh, this name always gets me. OK, no bet for me. But I'll be cheering loudly for the Tiger. Absolutely. We'll give him an absolute roar. But you're coming from the cross country. What's the difference, obviously, between just, you know, the Grand National pace to this mild May fence pace? Like you say, with Mr. Fish, you can't miss a beat, really, can you? No, you can't. I mean, look, I said, comparing it to the, the na I mean, the National is just searing pace early doors, isn't it? I mean, uh, so should he be fine, is what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't uh, matter the Tiger. What, for the Tiger? I, I don't think the Tiger will have a problem with the race pace. I mean, he's a he, I was going to say he's a pretty adaptable horse. He's not a pretty adaptable he's horse. The, he's yeah. unbelievably adaptable. So I don't see touch wood. I don't see that the, that the obstacles proven an issue. And I don't see travelling early being an issue. It's just whether you genuinely believe at 11 years of age he's got grade one class. Mm -hmm. Mm. Age of the, of the winners of this, of course, no 11-year-old there. But they're naught from four in the last 10 years, but there's only one Tiger, isn't there? And there's only one Native River as well. Barry, they're ambling round at the start then, trying to get their pecking order sorted out. The jockey's talking to each other. Uh, OK, so it's all about clan from what I can see in the market. 
Yeah, very strong. Three, seven, five. Bang on 11 to four on the Beffer Exchange. Nine to two, 5.5 waiting patiently. The same price for Native River. He's come in for a bit of support. Was 6.2. Eight, eight, Clondon. Nine, four. Mr. Fisher, some money for Tiger Roll now into 8.4. Haven't been as big as 10 to 1. He's into uh, 15 to 2. But it's going to be weird for Tiger having to look over at those national fences and him not having to jump them. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to have conflicting emotions as he sails by them. But it uh, looks like Native River's going to try to get off in front. Something he couldn't do in the old cup, obviously. But uh, she'll get a soft enough lead here. Uh, whether he can, whether he's got the toe now at 11 to, to last at home remains to be seen. Okay, great stuff, Barry. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great line. He's probably thinking to Jack, when are we going over there, yeah. man? Do you know what I mean? So they are nicely lining up now. There's, I'll tell you what, there's quite a few that are in the, in line for the lead, actually, aren't there? Even even the rank outside of the lot. Meletrion is up there. What would you do if they went to turn down the back straight on the Marmo track and Tiger just said, no way, we're going straight on? <laughs> <laughs> went and jumped the beach yeah. up. Yeah. Cox's job. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope the photographers are ready. Let's hope the photographers are ready then. Good luck then, wherever you're playing. Second race of the day here on Racing Post Live. It is the bowl. Some greats have won these over the years, but we've also seen them sunk. Yeah, there's a fair old wish to get on with it, and the starters thankfully let them go. This is Aintree, not Cheltenham, and away we go into the first fence. And Mr. Fish up, Nico de Boyneville says, no, we're not going to worry about the jumping. I'm going to lead over the first, and he's absolutely fine. He absolutely skies it. Racing pace. Native maybe River a off the bit. Native River, 9.6. Oh, no. Well, not going a yard. He's been... He's already been He did the same along. in the Gold Cup, though, mm. didn't he? He yeah. did the same in the Gold Cup. He sulked a bit when he didn't get to the front. Fisher, He's going to earn his fee on this. I'll tell you what's interesting as well, Barry. Tiger Roll, not messing around with him like they did in the cross-country chase either. What price has he gone after a couple he's of fences? Into, he's into 9-2, to two, Dave. 5.6 out of Beffer SP of 8.6, would you believe? It's going to make a mug of sauce yet yeah. again, isn't he, Tiger Roll? Great to see the 11-year-old enjoying himself. Clanders Oboe wants a piece of the action as well. Oh, uh, we go back to Native River, who's going in slightly better rhythm now. Militarian, the outside, he's in midfield, along with Clondor Castle. There was some viewer love out there for that. That's on the inside, waiting patiently, doing as usual, being patiently handled by Brian Hughes out the back. Aso out the back, and real steel, a horse that's not really measured up so far this season since joining Paul Nichols. He sees them all. Charlie Post. You happy with Mr. Fisher? Well, listen, I don't mind it. I think he's a horse that that will stay. I think, you know, you could see him in a gold cup. He stormed up the end in the marsh, didn't he? And in the Peterborough chase at Cheltenham as well. He's strongest at the finish. So is he, is he having a bit of a look about him, TC, up front? He, I think just then, um, Nicola Boyneville tried to, like, properly slow down the pace to let, to let Native River through. But Native River ran right up the back of Mr. Fisher and now he's been forced to, to make the running again. Um, John Joe's clearly not happy aboard Native, Native River, but he's... This horse just doesn't stop trying or running, does he? So No, through the brick wall, yeah. Native River will go. So real steel, I don't know how well he's going out the back at the minute. Waiting patiently, Charlie Post, your selection. What do you think about him so far? Happy enough so far. I mean, this is the way he's always ridden, so I, I, I read nothing into it other than that he's travelled and jumped well through the early parts of the race. OK, thank you very much, Charlie Post. And, oh, I tell you what, he's for a horse that put his legs in the water jump at Cheltenham last time and pulled up. Not a bit of it. Heard he's been schooling well Tiger since that's rolled, borne Dave. out. Look at Tiger, 8 he's, to 28. Yeah, he's going backwards now, isn't he? What do we make about this? Then he's gone back a bit of a pace. He's having a little think about it. I'm not sure how, uh, how happy Jack Kennedy is. But we saw, if you were watching the Kim Muir at Cheltenham Festival, never give up on Jack Kennedy as Mount yeah. Ida came storming <laughs> over the hill. Uh, they are going a pretty good gallop to my Ido poster. You tell me if I'm I wrong. I think they're going a good gallop. I mean, Mr Fisher is, is going about it in a tremendous fashion. He is prick, bowling along, but I think TC is right. I think in an ideal world, Nico de Boinville would love to kind of settle the pace down a little bit, but every time he tries to do it, Mr. Fisher grabs back hold of the bridle and keeps pulling him forward. Clander Zobo in a good rhythm. Nice yeah. pitch there, you know, as in he, he's jumped well. The cheap pieces have helped him travel early on. Slight different it's, uh, in tactics of a clan as well. If you remember in the King George was out the back, wasn't he? And yeah. also in the Denman chase, they waited, waited, waited. Going to make up his mind here. He's right in the in the perfect position at the moment, you'd say, um, unless Native River comes in between the pair, which he's just made a mistake there, so he's, he's probably not going to. Um, in in the King George, he was too far back. Everything went wrong for him that day. Uh, Demon Chase, yeah, they were he was ridden slightly off the pace, um, but I mean, this is this is how Clanders Over should be ridden. Uh, he has no excuses from there, does he? The passing stands for the second time, then of course, isn't it? In the bowl, Barry, I had a little sigh of indignation there as Mr. Fisher opens up a clear lead again. Yeah, no, Clan 294, he's very, very strong at that. I think it's a ridiculous price myself at this stage of the race. 5.3 waiting patiently. 8.6 Native River now, haven't hit a high of 17. Oh, Mr. Fisher. Mr. Fisher, steady away. Well, 
13 to 2 from 5 just there off the back of that. Tiger roll out to 32. Mm. I thought he would have spiked up a bit there just as we would, uh, we were hearing from Barry there. He, he, he really guessed at that, didn't he? He made it, yeah. He, a complete, like he and Nico weren't on the same wavelength at all and he, and he paddled straight through the middle of the fence and sort of like jolted as he landed and back on an even keel now. But um, I hate to say it, but what you've said pre-race, uh, this is my selection, of course. I think you're probably right, Posty. He's, 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 he's guessing again still, isn't he, a little bit? I mean, he hadn't been throughout the race, but I mean, just with the, the last of the circuit to go, he, he definitely made a, a mess of that. And look, it'll be interesting to see now as they head down the back for the last oh. time if he can get it together. And, oh, yeah. Oh, this time Nico has gone out the side door. Unseats. There you go. Charlie Post absolutely spot on about Mr. Fisher. Back to the drawing board with him. But I tell you what, Native River is really starting to fill his lungs up. He's going clear at the moment now with Clander Zobo, who's left in the lead on the far side. They're over that. Okay, I'll tell you one who keeps catching the eye is waiting patiently, creeping now into fourth. Clondor Castle. He's had a lovely sit so far for Johnny Burke. Militarian not out of it yet. Tiger looks like he's gone, doesn't it? Doesn't fancy it at all. He was up their early doors but for whatever reason he spat the dummy out a little bit and I think Jack Kennedy will just be letting him coast home here we are then what is this about five out yeah but I think we, we just yeah five out we've got the cross fence and then three up the straight yep three up the straight okay and how does how Six does to four on. how does Clanders over get beaten from here TC well I said that last time in the Dunman chase when he came alongside secret and Besson threw it away um Look, he looks like a good thing at the moment in running. Um, we should mention Militarian. What a spin he's given James Martin, um, the amateur rider. Massive price. I think he went off at 400 to 1. He's still there pitching. So. He really is, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, he's only 133. And yep, he's going to get... Condor Castle travel very well throughout. Really, guys, really yeah. well. And if you went with what TC was just a handicapper, you might be about to go instead of confidence on TC's yeah, face. I doubt he's got the class to pass Clan de Zobo from giving him a three-length advantage. But we'll see. We'll There's see. nothing for Clan de Zobo to have a think about so far, bar the fences waiting patiently could he possibly creep into it okay here we are then three out probably his worst jump of the race so far Clanders Obo Clondor Castle it's between these two surely isn't it Posty I'd imagine so I mean you see things change a lot at Aintree but I can't see this now first first two it's going to be fighting it out and Clanders Obo showing his class a dual King George winner now scantering away and I'll tell you what all of a sudden life is good for Team Nichols and Team Ferguson Hales and Jeb Mason as well because Harry Cobden shake of the raids what is under the bonnet plenty of petrol left he's gone effortlessly clear and over he flies wow three horses that missed out the Cheltenham Festival then go and take the opening three races of the Thursday of the Grand National Meeting and what an impressive win that was. I'll tell you what, Paul Nichols will be, at, it's like a blur now, a bad memory for him, the Cheltenham Festival, as it will be Harry Cobden as well, be full of confidence. Clondor Castle, a modest second in the end, looking back the to River. Native River, an admirable run again from the 11-year-old back in third. The rest, pretty much nowhere. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, this race was the, the Clan, Clan, Clanders Oboe first, the rest nowhere, wasn't it? I mean, he, he was the one horse, I think, probably throughout that travelled and jumped and put everything together on the day, and and he's he's won like a dual King George winner should you know he's he's, he's probably the he probably was the class angler in the race and sometimes sometimes you look into things too much don't you really and he he'd missed Cheltenham he had well, he even he, entered in the Gold Cup yeah and he had all the back class flat tracks reasonable ground and and he's he's been very very good today yeah it, re it really wasn't a good Grade One um, beforehand but he's shown that he's got the ability to win you know pretty decent Grade Ones just there he's absolutely bolted up um, Clondor Castle ran his good race. He was the inform horse, although he doesn't have the class of the winner. Um, Native River again. He's the form setter in it. You know he's going to run his race. He finished third. Where did the others finish? I mean, it was a one-horse race from the outset. Harry Cobden was in the perfect position throughout on the favourite. I wanted to take him on, but the cheap pieces have clearly helped him um, set his mind on the job. Yeah, he didn't have to think about it in the heat of the battle towards the business end there, Barry, did he? And when did punters know that he was going to go and absolutely hose up? Dave, he was always short. He always had the box seat. He, he traded at 288, 298, turning out of the back straight for the first time. You know, it, it was never it was like with Native River going so bad and, and waiting patiently, never getting into a Tiger roll dropping out. There was no in running story off the back of that. I'll tell you what, though. It's, it, the clan it's a, is seven it's... from 16 for the King George. That's what I was going to ask you, Barry. It's all about that. That that. Well, I guess he'll have to regain it, wouldn't he? Of course, because he was third behind Frodon in, in what was a funny King George um, uh, this season, wasn't it? So he's into sevens again. Lots of you would be tempted there. I'll tell you what, when you, if you're a Clanders Oboe fan, good ground, flat track, he does look like an absolute aeroplane at times, doesn't it? And these colours, they've taken out the first three races. No Jed Mason 
Ferguson and John Hale's horse in the next race. <laughs> now, I would say that the Irish will be delighted to hear that because along comes the biggest Irish hope of the day, maybe Bar Billaway, but Jason the Militant for that firm in the 325, Barry, the Aintree Hurdle, has been all the rage. Perfectly honest with you, Dave. I, I just I thought that run now, albeit given what eight or nine pounds to Petit Mouchoir, but I don't like that look at that form at all. I, he was, I think it was a six to one chance or seven to one chance when we first went up with this race. He's seven to two now, 4.5 in the exchange. He's not for me at that price. McFabulous, 5.2. Abacadabra, mm. 7.4. He'll enjoy the step up the trip. He travels sweetly. And Jason Middleton has to turn it around. Morgiana form with him. You're brewing up a storm who. Just not mad about him. Song for someone could put that very moderate run behind Goshen uh, last day. He, he could put that behind him. But the horse I was liking in at a 12 to 1 was Bouvedere, you know, mm. previous winner of this race. Uh, obviously, you know, he got, it was disappointed, no two ways about it, uh, behind Navajo Prince, first time up in Haydock. He uh, was very weak in the market, it has to be said that day, Dave, but he's got form here. Uh, I think Nicky Henderson could have him in tip top shape. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to back him in the place market. I'm going to back him three places. Win and place, actually. I'm going to back him. I'm going to have 25 quid on him in the, in the win. And uh, happy to be a price taker here at 11.5. And then in the three place market, I'm going to back him there as well. Basically just to cover our stake. He's around nine to four there, two to one. So uh, three, 25 quid on him in the place market as well. Again, Tom, happy to be a price taker around Bouva there. Lovely, both matched. Of course, yeah, he won this Barry Dinny in 2017, the former champion hurdle winner. Uh, he's had all sorts of problems. Second in 2019 to Super Sunday as well. He was. He was He was expected to win that day, wasn't he? I, think, I don't know whether it was a ground that blunted him, whether that was a sign of what might might be about to come in his career. But, yeah, no, he's an interesting play, Barry. And I think, you know, the viewers have got time to react to your trade out there if that's the way they want to go. We know that's what they like to do. And uh, it will be... It will be for quite a few of them out there, I think. It's a little bit like a Native River sort of thing, isn't it? You know, he's got that, that legion of supporters. But I think we can confidently say, guys, that we will be seeing the trend keeping up here because we've got... It, it's pretty much the top four in the market, isn't it, that have, that have uh, scupped out. Actually, Abacadabras is the one that ran in the Cheltenham uh, well, champion He didn't get hurdle, in the third hurdle, did he? Mm. No, it, I, I, I tried to find a, a horse that had either pulled up, unseated or fallen uh, uh, that won this race and I couldn't find one. So Abacadabra, so I was, ke I was keen to take him on. I thought we saw as good as he was in the Irish champion hurdle. That was, that was me personally. I think I like the track. I can, I can absolutely see that. Uh, but for will me, he stay, Abacadabra? I don't think so. Personally. You don't think he will? No, I don't think he'll stay. I mean, he's got the... He looks a speed horse to me. I don't think he'll stay the trip. But then again, I mean, there is potential there for him to stay. He was a non-runner back in November 2019, um, over two mile four furlongs. Um, there we go. On on suitable ground. I don't know what the ground soft that day. So certainly got his ground here. I think, hasn't he? Yeah. You look at these uh, connections of Abacadabras, and y you think he must have come from the pointing field, but you know he actually started off in a bumper, didn't he? So mm -hmm. they've waited a long time to get him up in trip. So he's not for me. I'll tease my tip once we get posties. Uh, Brewing up a storm, I've gone for as in hated jumping fences. He's not he's not an over big horse, and he's quite straight backed, as in he seems to find it hard to to manoeuvre himself about when he's in tight. And Ollie Murphy decided to go back over hurdles, and it's it's proved a, a pretty lucrative decision. You know, he was he was good in a, a veterans race around Taunton, got his confidence back, and look, he was getting I think he was getting five or six pounds from Fabulous at, at Fontwell. But do you know what? The way he beat him that day, I think he'd have beat him off levels anyway, personally. And, and oh yeah, I, and, I agree. And, you know, he's also, I'm not saying he's on an upward curve, but, he, you know, he's kind of got his, his career back on track. He was, he was massively highly regarded in his younger days as a novice and, and in, a, in a very open race. I think there's almost all of them are rated 158. That You know, you, you can make cases for almost everything bar maybe Miller's Bank of, of Alex Hales is to, the, 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 to have a chance in this race. And he was the one that I came down on. He has run over this course and distance, of course. He ran uh, behind reserve tank, didn't he, on Saturday, the last time the Grand National meeting was run. Yeah, he's coming into it at the right time. Aidan Coleman having a great 2021, isn't he? Yeah, he's been riding exceptionally well, you know, as in. And, and Ollie Murphy, he, you know, he'd had a, an in and out sort of time of it, but they are, they're running good now, you know. Did as this in, chap start off with you? No, a, no, no. He was bought a from lot the of he was, horses too, he, he? was He was bought from the Irish Pointing Field, this guy. He was an expensive purchase from the Irish Pointing Field. And, um, 
yeah, I mean, he, he, I think he started off with Dan Skelton before he ended up at Ollie Murphy's, and, and he he was placed in a in a Ballymore, and and you know, he, like I say, he he looked like he was going to be a real top notcher. Chasing career just didn't take off at all, and and yeah, he's getting things back on track now, back over hurdles. Okay, TC. It's another trappy race, isn't it? It's like the like the last like the bowl. Um, I like two horses in the race. Jason the Militant is my number one selection, though he is favourite. Um, I just think it was going to improve for the step up and trip, and for the ground. Um, I think his form's pretty decent as well. And he was a smart novice. He won a grade two as a novice. It's just he's unexposed. There's, there seems to be a lot more there um, from Jason Militant. And we've already seen that the Irish have much better hurdlers than, than, the, <laughs> than the Brits do. So I was, I was waiting for that to come in because yeah. some people, I mean, uh, Tom Segala Price wise, he's, it, it, this is his nap. You know, yeah. this, is, this is his most confident play of the day. He just, you know, this guy was considered for a champion. Or you could call him the B team, which some people have been having a bit of a giggle with, you know. But the, the fact that this chap can come on, I think when he started, he was around about four to one, wasn't he, TC, at, at, at yep. the start of the week? Then the plunge happened. I mean, anything that Rachel's riding this week, as Barry said, uh, it's Manila Times and the National, a horse that probably's got no right on the book to be a 10 to one shot for a Grand National. But because it's Rachel, because it's Henry, they're going to be strongly fancied. Yeah, most of his forms come on heavy and soft ground, but if you look back, he ran in a good ground bumper behind Envoy LN. He finished third that, that day. The second was Port Stanley, who's useful. So, I mean, all kind, he, he seems a very versatile horse, and given he's already rated 158, which most of this field is as well, but they're far more exposed than him. Um, I just feel like he's got the, the more... The, the you sure he'd stay, there. Tom, yeah? Yeah, no, what, I, what I genuinely... What the confidence that he'd stay? I, he was just really strong at the line last time. I don't know, I, th I think he's... He's a horse that, because he's so lightly raced, we've never seen him over anything over, other than two miles or two mile half a furlong or whatever. Um, but I just like the way he hits the line in his races. He doesn't seem like a weak finisher over two miles. And yeah. it's not, I'm not guaranteed, I don't think it's guaranteed that he's going to stay, but I just think that the, the option of him staying is, is quite probable. I think, um, and I'm I willing think there's to there's going to be on. loads of pace on here, and he'll be one mm. of them ones having to force it, and he's going to get really? taken on. Silver Street could take him on for the lead. Not so sleepy potentially could take him on for the lead. He's going to really have to to stay the trip. Barry, on. Do, you, do you think Silver Streak and, and Not So Sleepy stepping up will be ridden aggressively or not? Not So no. Sleepy's only got one way of running, hasn't he? I'm, I'm yeah, I think, certain that I think Jason the Militant will be behind Not So Sleepy. I mean, he can't go that clip. He, he, I mean, he didn't make the run in the champion hurdle, Not, not So Sleepy. Mm. They held him up in that. Wouldn't it? He, he just he, he sat off it because I don't think he'd go quick yeah, enough. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Yeah, just he be does race prominently. He could get it into his head mm. mostly and, and and want to be up with it and, and take it up. You know, he's he can be a bit of a headbanger. I see him down there oh, in yeah. the gallops and he works by himself in in the yard and up he goes and he's like a flying machine. That's his only one way of working as well. So, like, he, yeah, you're right. He didn't make it last day in the champion early. Never got a chance. But uh, I think there's going to be plenty of pace on here. I think Jason Hamilton's going to get taken on early for first. Song for someone, I think, will probably be up around there as well. Miller's bank the outside of the lot. He will be slightly up there as well. I don't know whether Jason Hamilton has to lead. It'll be interesting no. to see what tactics they adopt. And we'll see if the street be so aggressive over this. Well, I just wondered if they might revert to I don't know. hold up tactics. Yeah. Like it, it used to be held up. And it's, it's, it's quite fascinating, isn't it, to see how this is going to be played out. Yes, this is not yeah. one of those necessarily on paper that will play out. But if there is loads of pace, it comes to my selection. And it is McFabulous who chased home a brewing up a storm. I think the National Spirit will be the key race here. Jason Militum was my initial go-to in this. That was around about 4 to 9 to 2, as I said. Didn't get involved in the plunge. I don't want to be backing him. He's rated exactly the same. In fact, interestingly... This race on official ratings, I've noticed something here yesterday as I was going down. This is incredible, actually. The first, just bear with me while I look at my screen. One, two, three, four, five. The first six in the betting are all rated 158. 58, yeah. Have you ever seen that no, before, yeah, ever? Yeah. Charlie so, told you that 10 minutes ago. Did you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had loads going on in my ear. I didn't want to say I anything. Go. I thought, I'll let him have it. Yeah, Most yeah, respected yeah. word in racing. Did he know? <laughs> if you've just joined, there you are. Okay, great stuff. So listen, that, that, I, I find that absolutely fascinating. Um, and I think that Jason Militant at 11 4, not for me. If you could have told me one race at the start of the season, or more to the point when McFabulous found Paisley Park and Time Hill too strong over the three miles at, at Newbury, what race you would be going for? And the entry hurdle is one of those races, isn't there, that you can, you can pin a horse for very early in the season. It's this. I think we can forgive him the Fontwell run. If he comes back to the Kempton run, where... You know, he beat on the blind side with loads in it. He's really, really talented, this horse. It's all about staying for him. Of course, the one time he turned up at the Aintree Festival, he took out the bumper in 2019. It all looks right here. And who's been winning the races? So no surprise, Barry, that McFabulous is coming in for market support. 
Yeah, he's quite strong now, 5.4. But your favourite still, Jason the Militant, at 4.5, which is 7 to 2. Uh, 13 to 2, Abracadabra, 7 4. 9.6, Brewing Up a Storm. 10 song for someone in Bruva there. And 19, Silver Street. But yeah, the head of the market, at Jason the Militant, very, very strong. And McFabulous, off the back of obviously a good couple of races there for, um, for Paul Nichols and Harry Cobden. Oh, absolutely. Listen, and like I say, March is forgotten. It's a new month. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. And uh, Harry Cobden and Paul Nichols, they were absolutely spitting feathers, weren't they? Rightly so sick of each other, I'd imagine, at the end of the Cheltenham week. And now it's all rosy in the garden again. Quite right. Amazing how this can go. Uh, so uh, you let me off lightly there, I have to say. <laughs> the one You looked at me and you went, 158. <laughs> you could have. It, 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 the pelters that we've given each other over the weeks, me and Posty, I you. Do you trust what? McFabulous completely? Not really. Not really. I do think... I think there's something we call them thinkers, don't we? I don't, yeah. I, I, I just think there is something wonderful about him. I think he's he's got that lovely class about him. I know that Nichols has been thinking that he's going to go over fences sooner or than later. I half was wondering with Paul whether they might have missed the boat. I mean, he'd be eight next year. Do you remember jumping didn't come easy to him initially, did it? No. I seem to remember in his oh. first couple of runs over hurdles, he, he, he found it. Do you remember that? Yeah. Dreadful. And then he finds himself in the EBF handicap, didn't he? At, 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 you know, at the end of the Cheltenham Festival week last year, was it one three two? He ran off or yeah. something like that. He absolutely mm. hosed up, didn't he? And, uh, uh, one I of the admit, biggest gambles of the season, wasn't I it? I was with him that day. I, I ran about nine to two, and I, I, I not his best mate, won his second gold cup. If I known that horse was just going to win after jumping one hurdle, you know, and it, it just was so easy. So I've always had a bit of a shining for the horse, and. I think coming up against Time Hill and, uh, and Paisley Park over three miles is absolutely no disgrace in this sort of race. I guess, I guess he wants all the two for you. Could say that would be something. And seven to two is probably about the right price. But he was around about eleven to two yesterday. I thought that was too big. Yeah, it's, it just like I completely agree with you about Newbury. I, I thought he ran a super race there. He, he was the last one off the bridle, and to me, just looked like a blatant non-stayer. I just thought even at Kempton when he won, I, I know he looked like he was going to do it easy. Didn't yeah, he? and then. I, I, there's just, there's just something in the back of my mind. Got some just, stick about that ride, didn't he, Harry Cobden? Yeah, and it, it was it funny was on one. ITV, they did on ITV, and yet all the winners that day were being coming wide. He was, it was a Mick Fitz. Yeah, and yeah. like, actually, all the winners that day, he, he, he said that's song. not the way to ride Kempton. And yet that day, all the winners were coming exactly, wide and, yeah, and was, coming up the stands rail. So it was a key ploy. And I mean, you do ride to tactics when you're with Paul, you know, it's, it, it, it is something they do. I tell, you, I tell you what, if Song for Someone goes and wins this, another horse that was considered one of the best British champion hurdle contenders after he won the international. It's going to be some head scratch of that Goshen, isn't it? That's going to be... A... I mean, it's someone didn't travel at all that no. day, though. Like, the race was over from the first stride. I think we, can, we think we can now say that. Yeah, I, I that think wasn't so. wasn't a song for someone the, that we... The fact that love. David Bass is on is interesting as well, because, you Impressive. know... Yeah, just in case I think Song for Someone drops the bit again, I think David Bass will be there. Song for Someone's going to get a shock because Aidan Coleman's a pretty quiet rider yeah. over an obstacle, and all of a sudden he's going to be thinking, "Oh yeah, we'll just you know we'll we'll just we'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll tootle away over the and the next thing the yeah the lunatic lefty will be absolutely rocketing him from the from the moment the tapes go back and it's he's an about, exciting Whoa. thing when Dave Bass gets on the horse for the first time. Let's get some more viewer interaction up as we see Paul Nichols taking yet another winning interview and JJ says Bouvetier and Silver Streak each way for me. So you're weighing in with Barry to remind you that is Barry's play. Bouvedere to regain the entry hurdle. They used to run this on the Saturday, didn't they, this? Yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. As in, I, I remember, was it Ruby that broke his arm or something off Sal Kanda, literally just before the National one? What year? was the, what, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's it's a horrendous call, okay. That's yeah. going back. What's the, what's the horse um, of, of Henderson's that used to win it? I'm going to cheat now and look at the... Uh, it was, it, he was the typical entry hurdle horse, Oscar Whiskey. Oh, yeah. yeah. The back to back. Was it, was it Al Ellie, the, the, the Irish Al horse? Ella. Yeah, Al, yeah. Jim Collotty, yeah. yeah. That was ages ago, wasn't it? In, the, in those famous colours, yeah. So, look, it, it, this is a special race. We don't necessarily have the, the, the proven grade one winner in there, really, do I? I, I suppose Bouvedere is it? Of course, you'll be screaming at the telly saying. So, I don't know. Um, what have we, uh, some times for the hurdle races would be interesting. I didn't see the time for the Mon Morale race. I think we are, from what I can see with editorial chats going on on my screen as well, we're pretty sure it is on the soft side of good there. Will they water again? What is the, it, it's, it's raining in the south, I think, and it looks quite dry up north of what I saw. So I mean, just see, the shots we're seeing, it looks fairly overcast and blustery, but certainly no rain around. And sort of conditions that actually it does dry out pretty quickly when it's like that, you know, so... It, you, you know full well, whatever happens, they're going to try and make sure before each day when it starts racing, it's good to soft ground yeah, because yeah. it's the same every single year. 
the time uh, I've got that actually. Uh, can you see that up on your on your graphics? You can't. Uh, it is slow, twelve point six seconds, Mon Morel. So again, and a horse that that, that we think is going to be the real deal, uh, and winning as he did. The fact it's nearly thirteen points over just about, about sums it up, TC, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, especially the way he hit, he hit the line. Like he was finishing powerfully. That final section will be quick, um, but the time, yeah, suggests that it's it's on the slow side for sure. Um, look, the the clerk of the course wants safe ground. And good to soft is, is safe. I mean, some people will want the ground quicker for these good ground horses, um, but you're just not going to get it, entry, are you? Mm, no, you're not. I've just seen an interesting Kevin Morley trend in this entry hurdle. Eight of the last nine had one over two mile four. So I guess with Jason the Militant TC, mm. obviously, obviously one has done it. It's not like yeah. it's a nine out of nine or whatever. Um, when you've got a horse that's winning on bad ground, in Ireland and strong at the line. You think, again, this is that Aintree chat, isn't it? Mm. You're going to get two or four anywhere in a championship race. It'll be at Aintree. It doesn't always born out like that. So well, Rachel Blackmore's tactics here will be fascinating. And well, what we saw at Cheltenham, the best thing about Rachel Blackmore at Cheltenham, obviously she rode a load of winners, but it was the positioning in races. She knew how races were going to develop and she was always in the right place. Yeah, you get those jockeys on the flat, don't you? I'm, I'm tempted to say like Jim Crowley's and that. They're just so steady eddies. You know? Yeah. Always in the right positions where the horse is good enough. For... Henry de Brom had form worry at all. I see he's 4% mm. in the last 14 days. Potentially, though, at Cheltenham, obviously, he had an unbelievable week. What so goes up? <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, no, no, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. I don't no, know whether that's a factor I mean, for you guys or not. I'm looking at some of the... I mean, he's, he had a horse uh, at the weekend called Spyglass Hill, didn't he, that was 9-2. to two. The rest of them have been fairly big-ish prices, considering they're coming yeah. from, from that yard. So that's often what, you, what you're doing it on. But yeah, it's a little while since he had his last winner, wasn't he? No... No winner since we turned into April. I know it's early doors, but yeah, that is interesting. Well, uh, that'll be boring because he's got, of course, um, another other times, and he has a horse called mm. Visio Man that's been smashed for the Topham tomorrow. In the you know, in the markets, come all the way down again. It's that Rachel Blackmore thing, but Cheltenham and Aintree, very different propositions as we are seeing so far on this RP Live Thursday afternoon. What a pleasure it is to have you with us. There's a couple of people, I'm thinking about some of the social interactions. We said that Paul Holden guy was right, wasn't he? About Tiger Roll. What do we do with Tiger now? Just going to be all about next year's National Barry. Why have you run him in the race? Like, why is he in the race? It makes no sense. And that, that time he has done it. what they say he do. Capper has to judge him on that, Tom. Yeah, but will he? Andy Capper has to take how, that into account. When how many pounds are you going to I know he's beaten... But he has to take it into account. Why mm. shouldn't they run in the race? Well, the, the the national the they're not going to run as well, in the national. They? Why? Sorry? Why Why wouldn't you run him in the national? Because I know they said they now. weren't going to run him in the national. I'm not, not going to... If you don't know why by now, you know, there was a lot of politics around at the time with the BHA, what they did to Gordon Elliott, stopping him from running horses. Yeah, so it's, it's he actually finished fourth. That came know. into play. Yeah, it did. It, it, it's a strange thing, though, isn't it? Again, with you know, it's it's it, it can as we just see get slightly eaten as well about Tiger Roll. But it's uh, I'm I, I can, um, what TC's saying is uh, for Mark one six six, he wouldn't have even been top weight in the national. You know, it's it, it's a uh, we can he's a, he's well up to one six six in the national, isn't he? Face with the national, didn't they? They yeah. cut their nose off despite their They face. did. They did. It's it, simple as that. Yeah, it was it was all very silly, wasn't it? And again, well, I know I don't know. But the theory is they will have to down. drop him a couple after today. Yeah, you would think so. But there is something called the entry factor, which Phil Smith used to, you know, that was his thing, wasn't it? The entry factor. You, 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 you'd have connections that have got a horse rated in the 130s and yet he's run well over the national events before, gets a run in the national because of the entry factor. So, But the plan surely be the cross-country chase at the festival again if they come back, no? I mean, That's what it will be. He'll probably go and win at the Cheltenham Festival again next year. Again, he'll be a 12-year-old. 12-year-olds do win Grand Nationals. So, phew. Anyway, crazy one, the Tiger Roll thing. Um, he's, he's safe and sound. That's the most important thing. And I, I, I haven't seen... Did he finish? He finished fourth. Yeah. He did finish he fourth. He plugged on because waiting patiently pulled up before the last and, right. and yes, one he other. Yes, he finished fourth. And he, yeah. he plugged on and finished fourth. Handy Capper will be saying, do I have to drop him now? <laughs> he's made the frame. <laughs> OK, great stuff. Let us know what you think of the Tiger Roll debacle. Of course, he's not running on Saturday, we're two days away from the 2021 Grand National, and you believe on the history race cards it's going to have when you go down the winners and asterisks called off due to global pandemic. Unbelievable scenes, but what a race it is on Saturday. Are you with Cloth Cap? I said at the top of the show, what price does Cloth Cap go off? Let us know. Let us know your one, two, threes, and the nationals. We'll be going through them all. It's a really difficult thing, the Grand National, isn't it? You often get done. I used to do like a pin stickers guide. You know, I used to have to give like 10 seconds of a, 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 you know, of a line about 
each horse in the national, and it, it, it's it's tough to do. Mm. It's tough to do because each horse has got you know a certain level of exposure that you need to go into a national, and they're all characters, and they have to have it all absolutely the right way. There is one horse who's annoying me. I haven't backed him. I don't think the weather's going to come right for him. But Lord Dumanil mm. won the Grand National trial up at Adock. He's t- I tell you what, he ran in the Sefton, didn't he? I think on his second start back. Forget that. I was speaking to Paul Keely about this this morning. Paul's a big fan of the horse, and he said he just didn't really attack the hurdles that day. When he made his comeback over, um, over hurdles, sorry, at Kelso, he came back with a great big piece of birch in his leg, and it was almost like a, you know, sort of forgive it run where he went next. I can see him going well for a long way. If you've got a horse like that, a complete flyer, mine's Lord Dunmanil. Felt oh, sorry for Paul O'Brien getting the the jock off. Who's Nick's on? Oh, Schofield's, Schofield's on. Yeah. yeah, Nick's on, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think. He's, I think he's won six over. times on the horse, and you know, not done an awful lot wrong. But he's been jocked off for Nick Schofield. It shows you the, the ruthless nature of the old game. So yeah, quite right, absolutely. TC, have you got a flyer in the national? I can see you looking down the card. Yeah, well, I, I had to write a piece. I think it was a couple of days ago for the Racing Post. It went on the app and, and on the website. I don't think it was in the paper. Um, two horses at big prices that were worth a second look. I put up Annabelle Fly purely because I think he's well handicapped now. Um, can you believe that he's he's coming completely under the radar, Annabelle Fly, isn't he? Yeah, yeah I think the likelihood of him winning is very slim, um, but I think he'll run a good race. And the other one was Class Conti, who I'm very interested in for Willie Mullins. Mm. I don't know what str- number string he's going to be, four or five probably. Um, but he's a French import. Uh, he won who rides really well. TC? Who rides? I think it's Brian Hayes. Is it? Okay, all right. Yeah, Brian Hayes. Um, I just think he's pretty well handicapped. He finished second um, at Gorin in January last year in the Thiestes, um, off a mark of 145. I think that was a very good effort. Um, that was obviously behind Total Recall. So he was a second string that day. Um, and he's run really well last twice at Goran and, and Nace. I think he's probably well handicapped. I think he's off 147 or 149. Um, Love it. A couple of flyers for the National. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah, did you pick one out? What, one, if, you, if you could ride anyone in the National. Mate, mate, uh, uh, of course, Cloth is Yeah, I was going to say it. Yeah. Run, but, yeah. uh, okay, let's concentrate on that. So as a punter, if you're not with Cloth Cap at the minute, but you think he's going to win, it's almost like people are ashamed of saying they think that Cloth Cap is a good thing at 4-1. to one. You know, what's wrong with that? A winner of the, you know, a four to one winner of any race. So it's, it's bordering on lunacy now, isn't it? That that worrying time where you yeah. overthink things. Ma- yeah, massively. A bit like the Clan Zobo thing, you know, like you can get, you can go into it too much. To yeah, talk three to one about the Jewel King George yeah. winner. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't, yeah, I get that. But race punting is all about finding value. If there's no value in the horse, you don't bet the horse. It doesn't yeah. matter if you think the horse will win. I, I agree with that, TC, but this is also the national, isn't it? I, yeah. To back the winner. Have you ever backed the winner of the Grand National? Yeah, Amberley right? House. Um, back when I was very young. Yeah, my dad placed it. Um, <laughs> he's like, pick one, pick one. I think I backed Lord, Lord Galeen in 97. Did you? Is that yeah, right? I, went, I went on the Monday because it was after wow. the Wednesday. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that, was, yeah, that, was, that was some... It, so, it, listen, the national, what a great story. What's your favourite national performance? I remember when I went up to see Monty's Pass win under, under uh, Geraghty for, uh, for, uh, for the Mangan family. You knew about seven out that the gamble was going to be landed yeah. there. It was unbelievable the way that these... Uh, Ted Walsh, do we like his runner any second now? Papi yeah, I do. Seabass, yeah, I think he's... You know, right. it, again, it's a price thing with him now, though, isn't it? You know, Yeah, he's my anti, like, my anti-post bet in the race. Um, Kim Muir winner. Yeah, I, I like the prep, but I seem to get do. drawn into these things. Like with Love champ. the champ prep. Yeah, I like the prep of any second now as well, over two miles. Yeah. And he's been compared to Papignon and, and Seabass by uh, Ted Walsh, so obviously he has very high... Uh, he held in very high regard. From a handicapping point of view, you could definitely see yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I like Barry, I quite like Magic of Light as well. I think, I think she's Second nailed to on. Second to 2019. She's consistent, isn't she? Yeah. She needs yeah. to bounce back, but she strikes you as the, as the once a year punter. It's just Magic of Light in the National. You know, they do bounce back, don't they? And they come alive for this test. Anna Bale fly, great shout there. Let us know your flyers for the National. Lots to talk about, but we must home back in because the 325 is a couple of minutes away the entry order. Great to have these graphics on the screen, as you can see them right in front of you. The market is developing and I don't know, Jason the Militon, is he is he on the weak side, Barry? It's four seven. The last time we spoke it was four point five. It's six McFabulous six four Abracadabras eight six brewing up a storm. Steady away, Dave. There's been what over a million quid, one point six million matched mm. in the race and he's he's hovering around that seven to two mark. Looking at the industry SPs, it looks like they might go off joints though, McFabulous and Jason the Militant, who was around about the 11 to 4 mark this morning. McFabulous, interestingly, being kept away from the other looks side. Like, looks, like he's be, looks like he's going to be ridden wide again, doesn't it? You know, it, it, like He is obviously a bit of a, a slightly quirky character, isn't he? There's no doubt about it, but for all that his un, undoubted talent. 
Well, well, we're going to find out exactly how fabulous that engine is because they're about to jump off. And yeah, Barry was talking about lots of pace in the race. Once again, we're seeing a few vying up. They're all chatting down there. Who's going to be there? I think we can say that... Uh, Who's about the back? Buzz is out the back, isn't he? We not even mentioned Buzz, uh, the Nicky Anderson second string. I think we can say that there was some there was some love for him though for Thurlow Thoroughbreds, a classy horse on his day. Got his ground, Bally Andy, really rock consistent, isn't he, Bally Andy? This sort of race that he could go well in. Uh, Seventy-five day break. Guess what? He missed out the Cheltenham Festival as well. So three races down at the Aintree Festival. We've covered two of them for you, and if you ran at the, you know at Presbury Park, you can forget it. It's all about being fresh at the moment <laughs> you're laughing what are you laughing about i just love that sweeping statement after after three races yeah if you run the festival forget it <laughs> you're yeah. done yeah well listen i think i think the stats are on my side at the minute posted uh, okay so listen good luck wherever you're playing bouvedere barry just a final word with you he's really solid isn't he seven to one i can see with the industry he's 7.4 into 13 Ooh. to two now yeah we backed him at 10 so good confidence behind him doesn't make him win mine but uh, it's nice to see you know, like the pace, you know, scenario potentially as well, won't he? He's still got a classy, classy traveller. And you, you'd you forgive him that Haydock run, really, wouldn't you, coming back, I suppose? You thought it was a good thing that day yeah. without throwing you under the bus for that. Part. Yeah, I did. And I thought I thought it was pretty ordinary in, in the circumstances with the form of the race. But like you say, there's no doubt he's got the back class, hasn't he? Flag is up then. One, two, one, two. Will it be another one for Bouvedere? Good luck if you've played the former champion hurdle winner, former winner of this race as well. We're finally going to get off then. And away we do go. And Jason the Militant, guess what? Rachel Blackmore, she can do no wrong. She bounces off in the lead up to the first flight. Look, at Bouvedere's having a little say of the action as well. If you're leading not so sleepy, I guess you've got to be going pretty quick, haven't you? And they're not mucking about with him at the moment. Song for someone, just finding the heat a little bit too much over the first furlong, but he's a fine at the minute. And look, fabulous. A little bit keen up on the outside slightly like surprised to see him taking such an interest abacadabra buried away in mid-pack uh, up there as well silver streak on the inside of bouvedere abacadabra jumped that okay's fine wanted to see him over the first couple didn't we considering he took a tumble brewing up a storm out the back as well buzz settled out the back and song of someone as i said he's now moving up through the pack right on the outside must give a word to the outside of the lot miller's bank alex hales He's having a really good end to the season. He's got a good say in the inside as well. So we're going around the home straight for the first time. Jason the Militant, stamina, not a problem, according to Rachel Blackmore. No, I don't think they're going very quick either because not so sleepy, in the context of this race, not so sleepy, he's pulling hard. Bouvedere took a keen hold around that bend as well. Um, a fabulous and song for someone right up there. Rachel's just in the best place. She's managed to get the lead and they clearly don't think the stamina's going to be an issue. I think they went quicker over the first two. I yeah. think this is once again a sign of Rachel Blackmore's track intelligence. She's all of a sudden gone quick to get the lead, the uncontested lead nearly. A cigar and now, in the now, now she's sort of dropping the anchor and settling the whole race down. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It's something that we've spoken about on the show before. Attain your pecking order and then it's off. And she is now bossing the race, isn't she? Much will depend on what Johnny Burke and Not So Sleepy want to do because he could soften it up. Definitely on the outside alive to that was Harry Cobden and McFabulous who just pops over that one. Abracadabras may be a little bit in close. I'll tell you what, some for someone... He's, he's, again, TC, it's just sort of like when Cantor all over again. Yeah, he's, he's on and off the bridle a bit. He's been chivied into the bridle um, by David Bass. Uh, I, I think, look, he's still travelling OK at this stage, but he seems to be going out right on his hurdles as well. Now dropped right to the back of the field, so... He's hanging badly. Yeah, it looks like he's, he's hanging. hanging badly, hanging yes. badly out to his right. When you see David Bass, who's dropped to the rear, actually, uh, f first time up, he's, he's trying to get him interested post, isn't he? But Yeah, he is, he is. But, I mean, look, he, he's massively on the back foot. We, we've, we've seen it before. You don't want to write anything off too early, especially on this programme. But uh, he, <laughs> he, uh, he, we're not putting another zero on his price just yet, but it, it certainly is not looking like the song for someone early in the season. No. They are strung out, though, as they go out onto the far side. And let's go to Barry Orr for a market update. Yeah, song for Sunday, the big drift rate, the 140, 140. Jason Milton, 4.076. Now, McFabulous, Abracadabra, 4.6. Travels well at the back of the pack, Abracadabra, and a significant shorter. Bouvet there, 5.3 as well now in running. Uh, well, is it lots to play for, though, I think, still in the atri hurdle, isn't there? It looks like song for someone. I think we could put another zero on that. I can confidently say it. Bally Andy's just feeling it a bit hot as well. He wasn't very fluent there. Yeah, Abacadabras does catch the eye. Now it will all be about stamina as we go on to the far side. Jason Middleton, never been over the trip before. Silver Street, will he really get Ooh. on? Oh, sit up. oh, oh no, 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 no. Fav, as soon as I said it, well, we won't find out because, unusually, Rachel Blackmore has unseated Barry. Who does that mean the market like? Is it Bouvedere? Abracadabra's 3.45 and 3.4 Bouvedere. They're 
flirting with each other at the head of the market. Now, six, Mac Fabulous, eight, brewing up a storm who's creeping into it. And don't forget Silver Streak in there, now 19. Yeah, and he's come back on the bridle, Silver Streak. Thanks for that, Barry. McFabulous. Let's just have a little word on him. He's just he's slightly worried about the loose horses. It's all about what he's got left at the end of his race, and he's just not sure with the, uh, with the body language of Harry Cobden what they will produce. No, you're not. But, I mean, he's travelled powerfully. Um, and, look, and Harry Cobden's going to be in no rush right now. Just, uh, you just uh, say that yeah. just as he sort of he flicks the horse with his heel just to try and get him to come back onto the bridle. And you can see by the rain contact, like a bit of a uh, loose, loose, flappy horse. rain and... It, Harry Cobden, I would say, isn't 100% happy right now. Another slap down the shoulder as yeah. well there, Dave. Yeah, and brewing up a storm now starting to kick in his old rival. Not totally done for yet. Not so sleepy back into it. Yeah, he is. He's travelling really well, isn't it? Jess Stafford's mm -hmm. horse out there. Abracadabra's tracking that one through there in the home straight then. This is where McFabulous is really going to have to produce something. Wouldn't say he's oh. done with. OK, what have we got going on there? The loose horse. Oh, and then he took out Boover Dare. Jason the Militant causing all sorts of problems. Abracadabra's coming there swinging. Buzz is having to switch now. Silver Streak's there. Boover Dare over two out. He's absolutely going for it. TC, call it. It looks like Abracadabra is travelling the best on the inside. It's just where the stamina holds up. Loose horse is causing absolute havoc out in front. Don't write ah. off McFabulous just yet. No, he's, again, if, if, if anything, it's too sharp for McFabulous. Buzz running the race of his life. We're over the last end. Looks like it's going to be... Go on, oh. Nico. OK, so Abracadabra's flattened that one. Loose horse with him. Looks like Abracadabra's going to take this, guys, I think. Miller's Bank, I'll tell you what, it's running an absolute blinder. Miller's Bank, wow, unbelievable. This is my place, but Buzz is there. McFabulous, not today for him. Abracadabra's, then it all went wrong in the champion hurdle. I had to say it, didn't it? we got a horse that's run at the Cheltenham Festival that's won. <laughs> Posties over the moon. <laughs> Absolutely over the moon. Oh, wow. Okay, so Abracadabra's takes it out. Bouverdere, what a race he ran. It wasn't short on incident, Barry, was it? That loose horse, Jason the Millicent, causing all sorts of problems at home straight. Causing a lot of issues up the home straight. Yeah, just looking at it here, Bouvedere hit a low of 2.10. McFabulous hit a low of 4.3. And then Buzz also hit a low of 3.5, which is 5 to 2. Yeah, the winner showed his stamina reserves mm. there. He bags of it in a class horse and saw him trail. It would have been interesting to see Jason the Milton stood up if he could have stayed. But uh, Stain's the name of the game there, and he's he stayed, no doubt about it. Mm. Abracadabras. Yeah, and it all looks like he's been waiting for the trip the whole time, TC. Yeah, I don't think it was the, the best race as we see Buzz and, and uh, Miller's Bank were close up at the end. I would just love to have seen Jason the Militant stand up. He jinked right when Rachel was um, unshipped out of the saddle and I think he would have won the race. But look, there was a long way to go. Um, TC, you can't call that. I, I genuinely do. <laughs> I think he would have won the race. I, genuinely do. I think he's a better horse. I mean, I'll tell you what, where, where, where are you seeing I that in your crystal ball? Like, I mean, no, I can see where TC's coming from. Yeah, I'm going to level up the play. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. He's loose, out. finished up size. Come on, TC. Hear me out. Get, come on, give it to him. He's a better horse than Abracadabra as well. And he had the perfect place in the race. Like being prominent, Rachel had the perfect speed up front. They didn't go quick. He was held in the perfect position. Like, how could you not say that he wouldn't have at least featured in the in the finish? Well, they all feature rated the well. There's a difference, yeah. Tom, between saying he'd feature yeah. the difference and he would have won the race. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting told off. Told there. off by my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> you go from saying he's going to win the race to say he'd have featured in the finish. Posty's absolutely Easy. loving this. It's getting heated. It started with Tiger Roll. It's now gone on to Jason the Militant. Listen, I can see what, t what TC is saying. The way that they have, you know, the place horse is there. You have to think if he'd, have, if he'd have jumped round, he definitely would have been the one to beat. Whether Abracadabras, I mean, he has sort of won on the bridle, you, however. You well, you don't even know whether he would have stayed, Dave. I didn't, I didn't say he would have won. I said I think he would have won. You th okay, you, th you're, you're sort but of... You don't even know whether he would have stayed. That's the truth of it. I'll tell you what, isn't it lovely, this jump racing game? We have heated debates even here on RP Live. I can see the guys in the gallery. I wonder, um, <laughs> I wonder, I wonder, They're gonna be going. <laughs> I wonder if there's a tack issue with Jason the Militant, because if not, I, I, Rachel Blackmore's right, not going to be very happy. She's going to come back in and say it's tack, even the great Rachel Blackmore, isn't she, right. I think? I'll tell you what, it's, we don't, I don't know, yeah, I mean, he's caused all sorts of problems. What we can say, and I think you'll all agree with us out there, this is a race of who probably didn't turn up. I mean, uh, you know, song for someone, that was just, it was not the horse that we know, was he, at all. Brewing up a storm, laboured and disappointed. He just, he, he, like, up in this this top level, I don't think he jumped well enough throughout. Again, he, he, he kept putting down, dragging his back legs through hurdles, and he was always on the back foot. Silver I Street mean, hasn't stayed. Yeah, I mean, Bouvoudet is just not as good as he was, is he? He travelled there with all the class, but didn't see it out. I mean, but the, I don't think you can take too much away from the winner mind. Like, as in... You, 
he could be, like, like we said, he could. I, I always thought he's a weak finisher over two mile. And yet maybe all he ever wanted was a step up in trip because, he, he, I mean, he's travelled very well through here and he's seen it out good. Yeah, he has. And uh, uh, he, he will be, they'll be thinking of nothing else but this race next year, I would imagine. Now, we've got some viewer interaction on the screen who joins the party. Are you heatedly debating with us, Hugh Masson? Don't Jason, say, don't say it. Have won. Don't say it because Barry will lose his head. <laughs> do not say it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Barry, the viewers there with TC a little bit. No, but you're right. I mean, it was, it. it was just too far out, wasn't it? We just do it. He can't really say that. But listen, it's, it's all about opinions. He's put his back legs through the uh, the final hurdle as well, and he's still sprinted away. But you can say that he's beaten Buzz, who a one five three is a cracking run by Buzz. Uh, is, is he even finished? It, he's finished Buzz second. Buzz is second, Buzz, yeah. He? Miller's bank third. He's really been suited by the trip, Buzz. I think we can say that. If, if anything, he looks like he might want to go a little bit further. Miller's bank is one of absolute corker. A real advert for what Alex Hales can do with his horse. He's a good trainer. Like, he's had a very good year. I mean, like, we won the, the, the Mayor's final the other yeah, day. Yeah, and that. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not going to help Miller's banks mark that. No, definitely not. Or, or Buzz. I mean, to see those two horses f feature in the finish just suggests that plenty haven't run their race. Yeah. yeah. Silver Street hasn't quite got home. It was laboured, wasn't it, uh, for brewing up a storm. If anything, he's just got a little bit of interest on the run in there. McFabulous, really disappointed with McFabulous. Mm. Strange tactics. Finished really weakly as well, as you see on the run in there. He lost three places. Yeah, it's it's strange tactics on the outside and and, 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 and prominent. I thought he was going to be the one that came to To me, the it's, like, it's, it's almost like they don't quite know what they want to do with him because like there's, I'm, I'm pretty sure like when he won round... Kempton, he was ridden patiently and then challenge wide. Again on the outside. But, but, but yet today, like they've jumped off on what looked like a good gallop over the first couple, very prominent, and he's sort of been there throughout and then finished weekly. Is it difficult to kind of know to, to make a. I think they were line. tossing up between running here or in the three miler later on in the week. They were. Really. They were. And it yeah. looked, it, yeah, you're right, Barry. It was a good shout because you look, you're looking two out and he's sort of coming back into a little bit. And maybe he's paid for that wide trip, I think, by the time it comes to the running. Song for someone we could see pulling up. Hope he's all right That's for Team Tom Simmons as well. But, uh, ah, eventful, eventful scenes then here on RP Live, not just on the track, but in the studio as well. You love to see it, don't you? It's heating up. The nun seat rider on Jason the Militant, was it? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just saying, I didn't know there was a tack issue I because ago, I think he sort of jinked a little bit right. And it's like, I don't know, I don't think Rachel would be that happy, you know, if, if there wasn't a tack issue. I mean, look, it happens to everyone, but uh, it, 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 was, it looked fairly soft from here. Well, look, that's the hurdles pretty much done with. We're over the fences now, and I'm delighted to say the next race, they're back. It is the National Fences in April, and it is the Hunter Chase. And we have got a short one here, Barry Orr. The market's up on the screen. How low will Bill Away go? Yeah, currently 11 to 4, 3, 8, 5, 7, 6. Semetagal Cat Tiger is 7, 4, 8, 6. Late night pass, some man 10, 5, and it's 16, 5. Bar them. Plenty of runners, but I think there's very few actually counted. The one I've come down on is late night, night pass with Gina Andrews. Uh, didn't get the, his own way up front the way he usually likes it at the Fox Hunters, but he did take it up mid-race, traded at 3.5 in running, led them down to the second last, just didn't get home over that Gold Cup trip at two mile, or three mile, two and a half furlongs. I think the drop back in trip will help him here, and I don't see a lot of pace in this race. Jack Dashing Perk, probably mm. one that would like to be close up, and Tango de Gilet, another one that will be prominent, but uh, I think he could get, late night pass, could get their way up front with uh, Gina Andrews, and I'm going to back it to lay it back in running. So I'm going to trade here. I'm uh, going to have 50 quid on it at 8.6. Happy to be a price taker. I'm going to look to lay it again. Maybe a little bit shorter than what it traded in running in the Fox Hunters. Like I said, traded a 5 to 2 there. I think it might trade a little bit shorter. Maybe uh, 2.50, which is 6 to 4. And we'll select the keep bet function there. So once this race goes in play, my bet stays in play as well. So I'll happily take 100 quid out of it at 6 to 4. And uh, I'll have a green book if I, in fact, do get matched. Either way, I'll win uh, whether it wins or it loses once I get matched at 6 to 4 in running. Lovely. Thank you very much, Barry. Or oh, thank you, TC, for doing the trading. They're getting on in that regard anyway. I'll tell you what, actually, having a little bit of fun and a bit of a heated debate, haven't we missed that? Haven't we missed that in general, you know, being in the race course bar or something like that or in the pub at home, whatever you're doing on the course, wherever you watch racing? We, you know, having an argument about racing is something that people have genuinely missed, isn't they? Just full stop, isn't it? Like, I just, I love it. Or about anything. Yeah. 
I love it. I don't know. I've been arguing plenty. Yeah. <laughs> plenty for me to find an argument with in my house, let me tell you. But yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. the missus isn't watching. Yeah. Father-in-law will be, though. Otherwise, um, there'll be another argument. No, it's all good. Listen, we've all missed it. Absolutely. A little bit of heated debate. It makes it fun. And that's what we're having here on Racing Post Live. Right then, we see where Barry's going. Late night pass. I want to come to you with this. I, I, I don't want to sort of stereotypically say this is the race you should be talking through all the horses, but... You, uh, you'll know more about that horse than I will. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, like Gina and Tom are, are, are friends of ours and like, you know, rivals and whatever. And, and Late Night Pass, they, I think it was actually bred by Tom's parents as well. So it's a, it's a great story. And, and it's one of those, this isn't a horse that's been bought from under rules. It's, it's a maid. It's come through the point to point in ranks, which is fantastic. Uh, he, he ran a super race at Cheltenham. As Barry said, maybe he didn't quite get home under an aggressive ride. Uh, the only thing I would say about he's not very big. He is a good jumper, but he's not very big. And, and it'd just be interesting to see how he takes to it. And also, with, we have laid the Cheltenham factor to rest. But he did have a hard race at Cheltenham, as did the favourite, Billaway. And I ju- it's just whether that's going to be come into it, you know, backing up 20 days later down in trip. We have laid the Cheltenham thing to rest, technically. But Abacadabras fell early, didn't he? So, yeah, we... we <laughs> I'm still in there. Picture. You're still in there, yeah. Somewhere yeah. along the lines of that. This is, right. this is the concrete test for your this factor. Is, absolutely. This, you're right. You, you can't wait for Billaway to come and... <laughs> if Billaway oh, wins or late. late night pass I'll wins, stop that one. You have to accept your, your factor's gone. Your trends is out the window. Absolutely. All right, fair enough. I, 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 and I shall do that. But, of course, we move with how it goes. That's yeah. what it is, isn't it? So, are we going to see... Or you think along the lines of Barry or are you going for something completely fresh? I just, um, I'm going with some man uh, from the Irish train, Barry O'Neill rides and I thought he's very impressive on his last start. Gra- granted, the, I mean, the, well, it was on yielding ground. I mean, I don't think it's going to be that much different today around Aintree, especially around the national course where they tend to put even more water down than, than the Marbmay track. I, he, he's got, I think he's got enough boot as well because I always feel this is a race where they tend to go quick early, but you don't always get into it. So if you, you want to be, you want to have a prominent sit and, and, and be able to jump and travel on the front end. And I think he's going to be able to do this. And he's, it's a tentative selection, isn't it? I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a lottery of a race. Yeah, I'll go, come back to you on the pace angle. That has been spoken a little bit about amongst the riders and the connections as well. Do they go really hard and then pecking order? Uh, it, it is uh, restored. Uh, TC, your selection, please. I'm with Cat Tiger. I think Billaway is obviously the horse to beat, and the market tells you that. Um, it just depends how much that Cheltenham um, effort t- takes out of him. I just like Cat Tiger as a horse. He was, he was bought to be a hunter chaser um, by David Maxwell, but uh, unfortunately, he won a, a grade three at O'Toy um, in 2018, which me- meant he couldn't run in the hunter chase last mm. um, in 20, 2020 2019 season. Um, and of then course, he, I forgot about that, TC. You're right. That's yeah. it there. And then he returned after wind up at Leicester um, last month. He won only by a short margin at short odds. Um, but look, second time out after wind up is the angle. Providing he jumps well, I think he's got a good chance. Not from six at Aintree, David Maxwell is. Yeah, that is. I'm just going to say, like, it, 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 he's a brilliant story. Yeah, it's a bit he of puts a, a lot of money into the game. But would him being on board be a slight negative yeah. factor for you or not? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, look, he's, he's a good rider. He's ridden a fair share of winners. He's not a great rider. And obviously you've got Patrick Mullins and, and whatnot. In Will Biddick. Yeah, he, he, he has won big races, exactly, we yeah. should say that, David. And he has won, a, he has won on this chap over the fences at Autoy as well. But yeah, this is, these are slightly different fences, aren't they? So Cat Tiger, and, and this was always the plan for this chap. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, to wait for David to ride this at Aintree. Yep. So he's the buzzer. I like the other one of Nichols, actually. Sometical. This would be one of my more confident plays of the day. Everything is right for this now 12-year-old, isn't he? Sometical, of course. He beat Porlock Bay. Was that was, was it at Wing Canton, wasn't it? On really testing ground. He ate stayed Porlock Bay that day, of course, who was the, the conqueror of Billaway. Uh, at the Cheltenham Festival. I'm still surprised that he got up that hill better than Billaway, but he mm. did. Does that suggest a chink in Billaway? I don't know, maybe. Um, hard to knock Billaway. I really think that, but mm. I think he had, that was, of all the races that come to mind, maybe bar Gold Cups and things like that, he had a really tough race, Billaway, didn't he? And so Metagel, of course, they ran him quickly trying to qualify him for the, uh, the Cheltenham Festival. They say it came too soon. I would go with that. Will Biddick, no problems with the Biddick. Oh, like the... The, one of the very, very best. I mean, actually won a, won a festival race, a conditional rider for Venetia Williams, but he's a, he's a big, big Cornishman. And so he switched back and, I mean, he's he's broke all the records. He's the winning most point-to-point jockey in Britain. Yeah. And, like, 
he's one of the, I mean, there, and I can go through the list. There's an abundance of them in here, but he is one of those that is an amateur in, in just name only. Fantastic rider. It's the weight thing, I guess. Again, yeah. again coming into it like it is for the, uh, the great Irishman out there as well. Uh, so Metagal, three spins at Aintree. Uh, a couple over these fences, completed every time. Never out of the top three on good to soft. So... I think he will give Will Biddick a very good spin. The trip is right as well. The other thing to say about this race, I couldn't find any winner younger than 10 in the last 10 years as well. So the elder statesmen's come to the fore in the Hunter Chase. Right, that's the Hunter Chase preview for you. That's 4.05. Plenty of time to digress. So shall we do that? Let's get some social interaction. Back on the screen for my viewers, Paul Holden. He was right about the Tiger. This is the Grand National one, two, three. There's a really interesting one in here, isn't there? Cloth cap, Manila Times, and Far Class. I want to come to Barry Orr about this. Keeping it simple, then, is the Holden with Cloth cap. Manila Times, you mentioned that at the top of the show, Barry. Uh, ran really well at the Dublin Festival, didn't it? And Far Class, a Triumph Hurdle winner, going for the National. Yeah, another uh, Jiggenstown horse uh, has a big chance as well. I don't know what you want me to say about them. Like, he's. Uh, the Grand National for me, it's 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 all about one horse. It's all about Annabelle Fly. I I thought uh, he's coming in like you mentioned there earlier under the radar. He's finished second in a Gold Cup. You know he's he's only beaten a little over thirteen lengths behind Tiger Roll in twenty nineteen. So uh, yeah, I thought he was the he was he was my main fancy in the race. And then obviously Magical Life for Jessica Harrington and, and Robbie Power as well, a previous winner of the race on Silver Birch, Robbie Power, but. Uh, there's so many horses in there with chances. Uh, the one thing I know I won't be doing is backing or telling anyone to back or tipping cloth cap to anybody. Mm, all right, so you've got that. Not cloth cap before to one for Barry. And Magical Light and Annabelle Fly. Be a great story for Tony Martin. That If you can get over the line, far class. Absolutely fascinating. Whatever before we move on. Uh, uh, unlucky, I think we can say that behind the shunter. Got knocked all over the place. Maybe shunter was the right winner, but far class. It, it, it's interesting they're going in and not the top of them, right? Yeah, I backed far class at Cheltenham. Um, I thought he was very unlucky, but then again, the shunter just kept finding. Probably wouldn't have ever got to the shunter. Um, but he ran a very nice race in second. I don't think he'll stay the trip personally. Um, jumping's obviously got to be a problem as well, um, a doubt. Um, very interesting move, though. Very interesting move as well. Thank you, Paul Holden, for that. Who else we got coming in on the screen? Darren Walker joins the party and says, Kimberlite Candy, Manila Times, that's two for Manila Times, and Cloth Cap. So what we're seeing thus far, guys, is that Cloth Cap basically has got to be on everyone's shortlist for the actual win, no matter what you think of the price uh, and all that sort of thing. Manila Times also getting a lot of love as well. And Kimberlite Candy, Tom Lacey's horse, uh, second in the Beecher when last seen, kept deliberately fresh, classic chase winner last year. Has he got a bit more room to manoeuvre in his mark that he's running off off this exalted mark? We know he's going to be bang there, you know, on, on everything he's done over the entry fences thus far. Well, I mean, he, he, like he's got course form, hasn't he? But I, again, I, I read a stat that is, uh, plenty of the, the most recent national winners never ran over the fences before. Like, is, is, is it's, that a fact? It's a or trend not? that's turned on its head, that. Yeah. You used to sort of have to prep in a beach or something like that or have a little look at them or maybe a top of them would move up. Um, but yeah, it has become, it's become a come to, you know, come alive at the race. And the one that sort of knocked that on its head was Tiger, of course, that, that went and followed up. So I mean, what you can say about Kimball I can see Candy, he's shown a real liking for jumping the fences. He's almost a guaranteed stare as a, as a classic chase winner from Warwick. And, and he ticks plenty of boxes, doesn't he? As in Tom Lacey's been pretty bullish about him in his lead-up to the race. He says he's the finished article and he's exactly where I want him. And I said that would be a, a positive because Tom Lacey isn't a bullish character. If, if, do you, do you know, like There are some trainers, like I always think with... Like Dan Skelton or Paul Nichols, like they they are revved and, won't we and, positive, yeah, and yeah. positive about everything. Once they make the decision, we're running, we're going to win as well. <laughs> Whereas yeah. Tom Lacey's he's much more of a, a cautious character. I'd have said in 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 what he says publicly, and and for him to be very bullish. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's a it's a big a big positive for Kimberly like Candy. I can tell you, Darren, if you're not sure that Graham Robway and Paul Keeley very keen on that chap as well. What else we got coming on? Another one, two, three, please from Daniel Jepson on the screen. My national picks first. Ah, a cappella bourgeois who actually makes my... Hey, there's a lot of love here between me and Daniel. Uh, Magical light, can definitely see that running really well. And Lord de Manil as well, my flyer. A cappella bourgeois is also on the shortlist if you apply trends to the race. Uh, of course, no album photo to chase home this time. He's got a lot of class about him. My slight worry is that when he tends to travel over here, it doesn't always come good. But he is very, very much under the radar. And being with Team Mullins, I wouldn't be surprised to see some money there. Daniel as well. There's your one, two, three. Absolutely know it. No cloth cap 
for Daniel Jepson out there. Keep them coming in, the National 1-2-3s. Happy days. The Grand National is back on Saturday, 5 p.m. That will be our final race of the week here on Racing Post Live. But this afternoon, myself, Dave Orton, Charlie Post, Tom Collins and Barry Orr have been guiding you through. We've got two more to come, haven't we? And we've got the two-mile red rum handicap, but for now it's two-mile five over the national fences. I think we're going to have to take a little... Little team commentary of this posty. Yeah, I think we'll have it's to work. Something together. you've become more accomplished at, shall we say, over the over the recent time, isn't it? You've produced a, a lovely commentary when I was last year. Posty did. There you go. If you think I'm taking the reins for the fox hunters, I don't know about <laughs> that. As in, uh... There's a there's a there's a lot of love going on for for Posty's calls here, but you, it, it's something you did down at Cheltenham, wasn't it, uh, with John Hunt? You yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not for one second going to say I took over the commentaries, did but you yeah, take the sort of like old John Frankham role. Yeah, exactly. Like... And it, it, I've done it for a few years now with with John, and it. it we kind of have a, a bit of an understanding, you know, about when he wants me to come yeah, in yeah, and that how, feeling. how much he wants me to say. We've still got to work on that one. We've, we've got you a and I. Bit, a little bit more. We've got yeah. <laughs> well, on our commentaries. Yeah. I mean, I'm no hunty, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're coming along as well. I mean, oh, there you yeah, go. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. I noticed that all the horses are rated 158 after you pointed out. <laughs> yeah, look, the fact that you did it 10 minutes after me, I mean, it doesn't matter. We, we work together, don't we? You know, so, and yeah, I, no. I wasn't going to chuck you under the bus. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to go along with it. Go, oh, listen, yeah, very man, good. listen, man, I did five. Five days at Cheltenham week, not even Barry Orr did that. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, listen, it was a long old week, but we absolutely loved it. And it's delightful to be up at Aintree as well, feeling for the people of Liverpool that they can't, unless you're an owner, of course, that you can't go onto the track at the minute as well. I bet there's some buzz up there, though, despite the fact that spectators aren't allowed to go. We have a little word about that when the spectators are coming back. Um, we've, I asked you about the point to point. I'm desperate to go to a point to point, as you know. I've been talking to you about it since. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm desperate to see you at one. But yes. hope you just make sure you bring the drinks, yeah? That's going to happen. Don't worry, we won't remember leaving, of course. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I asked you when exactly it might be. We're, we're, TC, let's bring you in on this. Uh, of course, racing was part of the pilot events last year. Mm. And Liverpool were actually keen, weren't they, to get some in. And it, it, it was the local government. The local council said, yeah. no, we're not ready for it. And all that sort of thing. So despite the fact that Oliver Dowden... Uh, the culture secretary has said, yep, yeah, racing's fine, all good, you're out in the open air, you've, you're, you're all ready to go. It's the, it's the local councils aren't doing it. We're hoping we'll get some, though, before, before June, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, we're all desperate to go back on track. And probably in this case, it is best to be safe than sorry, um, you know, because we don't want to go through the whole situation again. And maybe waiting a month or two um, is a wise decision because... God, I tell you what, I don't think I could go another year without going on the racetrack. When was the last time you went on the racetrack? Was it Kempton? Yeah, was yeah. It was Oakley Brown in a pony race. <laughs> a bit after that. That was your that. great shout, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, a bit after that, but I think it probably was Kempton, you know. Yeah, we've got the lucky one next. Was he? Even Barry Orr's been allowed out. Was it Haydock you went to, Barry, wasn't it, for your big day? Yeah, I was in Haydock and I was in, uh, I was at the Tyndall Creek as well. I think the Tyndall Creek was the last race meeting I was at, actually. Oh, it was, I know for a fact, so uh, yeah. What's the, um, there's no plans to open it up over here at all. I was just about to ask you that. No, you're still, yeah, on, on, a, on a tight rein there. So, OK, we're not quite there yet, guys, are we? Not quite there yet. But the action continues. And let's hope we have been raising your spirits. Let us know if you've been enjoying the show. We've got some great feedback going along. We're with you every Saturday. That's the plan in 2021 and the major festivals as well. And here we are at Aintree. So uh, my Semitic Albert, I, I'm actually really really looking forward to this i think he's uh, it's um i know that all being well two out i'll be getting excited i think on Semetigal. um what is bill away doing now though barry or uh, is he shortening up is this just one that punters are like let's just put our faith in in this rock solid consistent hunter chaser yeah he's really strong at the head of market of five to two dave uh 3.50 on the Beffer exchange 7.4 now cat tiger Semetigal. A little bit weak out to 8.8, eight, eight, six lighting past some man 10, and it's 20 bar depth. Okay, all right. So it's a, it's all about Billaway. We thought that would be the case. I spoke to a couple of decent judges I know, and I said, what's the nap of the week? And a few of them put him up to me. So they, they're not worried about the fact he's had a hard race and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I've seen him clout the odd one before as well from me. He can, yeah. Definitely can, yeah. As in a, but, it's, I mean, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how he adapts to these fences, won't it? And there's no, I mean, there's no doubt, as I think you said earlier on, he is... He is probably the standout hunter chaser on both sides of the RSC at the moment, and, yep. and yeah, if, if, it, if it all comes on the fringe of the sphere, yeah. do you remember on the fringe back-to-back yeah, yeah. back winner of this? I think this race kind of has a, a slight air of the Grand National, though. I mean, the price of Billaway is just probably a little bit cloth too cap like short. yeah, like cloth caps probably a little bit too short for most punters, though. He's obviously the standout on what we've seen this year, much like cloth cap. It's just mm -hmm. a decision of whether you go in short on the favourite and hope that the Cheltenham effects haven't had 
um, a negative effect on him um, or if you try and look elsewhere for the value play. We've talked about riders a little bit, haven't we? We must. Uh, it's just a thrill to have these guys back, of course. Derek O'Connor forced to sit out the Cheltenham Festival. He was on Federici, isn't he, for Donald McCain? Uh, I looked at his record for Donald. He's one from five. Uh, that, was at, that was at Cheltenham. We've got Jamie Codd in here as well. We must mention him on Mighty Stowaway as well. Um, again, you can see why they're the prices they are. But with riders like that, are you surprised there's not a little bit more Rachel Blackmore effect about them? I mean, look, without doubt. I mean, again, you're talking about exceptional riders, aren't you? But... I suppose, like, like like all these things, no matter how good you are, you've got to have the uh, the partner to go with it, and and certainly with Mighty Stowaway and and Federici, it's on current form. It's it, it's hard to kind of give them a, a standout chance in this. Tailed off Mighty Stowaway, wasn't yeah. it? Is it interesting that Cod's on there, or is this just a case of taking the ride? I think I think it's just like you know, it's probably the the one ride you get, and and like. All, Anything can happen over these fences, and you know, it, it, you know it's from a fantastic operation in Calundra House, and it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world to see it take a massive step forward. And you've also got the fence factor, haven't you? It, the horses can come alive, and we, we we've seen big big priced winners of, of these sort of races before. So these guys would, you know, they're they're towards the end of their career, and, and they're not going to get stacks more chances to come and ride over these fences. So I, I, they're going to grab it with both hands, aren't they? We had a hundred to one winner in 2013 I won't ask you to do the quiz thing not Keith Melrose yet this week but uh, Tartan Snow do you remember that for the Coltards that's mm. right yeah. Yeah. so you're right mm. you absolutely can again a horse that came into it in form but little known firm and you know you know by the national um, standards and uh, they uh, uh, they took it out on the fringe of course back to back winner of it as well Top Wood do you remember him yeah. last time it was run uh, for Kelly Morgan of course Tabitha Worsley Riding the national, yeah, yeah. Um, she's she's really impressed me, Tabitha Worsley this year. She's given some absolute crackers for your old gaffer, Robin Dickin. Yeah, no. I mean, look, she's she's very able to ride as well. Like you know, come comes from the the amateur point to point background as well. As well as we see with running the fox hunters and very capable given the opportunities. And uh, yeah, big big moment for her on Saturday. One horse that people will be thinking we've not mentioned this yet. Talking about the riders, and he's going to be up there is Mr. National Fence himself, Mr. Whaley Cohen. Mm. Sam Whaley Cohen's got a phenomenal record. I know mean, a lot's been made of that, hasn't it? But there was that ten-year period. Do you remember, he could do no no wrong for them at this meeting, could he? Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, like, and like you say, it it does have to be something you have to factor in because he he seems to have. His style of riding must be ideally suited to this. I mean, granted, again, you've got to get on the right horses for, to, for that to be showcased, but uh, yeah. it would not be the biggest surprise in the world to see him get Dashing Perk into a good rhythm and, and have him up there throughout. I'm finishing five lengths off uh, Cade de Burley last time's no problem. We've got Golden, Golden Toboggan in there with Jack Andrews, another comp competent rider for sure. He, that was the second last time. Let's get some more socials in then. Peter McGuigan. Who is that, right? Peter McQuiggan. Yeah, there we go. Mr. Malarkey, each way in the Grand National. The Team Tizard, a horse that stays all day, will light the ground. Mr. Malarkey. Yeah, OK, happy days. Again, it, it, one of those absolute flyers, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, again, just going back to form with, with Tizards, they've not ran that great so no, far no, today. No. How did the horse run in the first race? Remind oh, the other Allen, yeah, not, not so good. He travelled right to, to yeah. a point and then just weakened. Just what He's got one of those changing of the guards, as I mentioned. He's got one of those feels... Mm. You know, over Colin, over retiring, of course, and handing over to Joe. We know it's been a tough year for them anyway. You get the impression, yeah, it's been a horrendous year, and it actually shows where racing doesn't really matter at all. But you, do, you, you get the vibe that they almost just can't wait to get to the end of the season, yeah. regroup. Joe's going to take over and just start afresh because it it just hasn't got rolling at all, has it really? Yeah, lost in translations and all that sort of thing have got lost in the sea, haven't they? Okay, that's great. Chris Timms joins the party as well. And the National 1, 2, 3. First, Cloth Cap, Annabelle Fly. And third, Discarama. Barry, perhaps a word for you about this because the sports book have seen lots of love, I'm sure, for Paul Nolan's charge. Yeah, I think he's had a recent wind up as well, Discarama, which uh, he's, he's not a horse that I like. He, they, they've punted him on several occasions and he's let them down so uh, he wouldn't be one that I'd be tipping up but he's into 14 to 1 now as well which is plenty short he, he looked like a, 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 a proper nationals but Barry's right Barry likes playing this game it, 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 it's, it's just looking at the numbers and it's usually right when a horse goes low in running and doesn't quite get the one next to their name I can imagine he's been a classic one like that and the old discorama was it um, Le Broy and him, wasn't it, that, that went head-to-head, -head, wasn't it, in the four-miler? Was it, was it that one? Uh, he finished third in the Ultima. In the Ultima, he finished third. Yeah. 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 No, Le Broy, it was. It was Le Broy, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it? yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Anyway, he, he's a horse that stays. 
latest exhibition, uh, we saw him hit the frame, didn't we, in the Irish National as well. This has been the ploy for this. He could have gone to Cheltenham, like Discarama. There's been lots of money for him. Chris out there as well. Good judge you are, Chris, as well. We know that from previous shows. Great to have the viewer interaction. You make the show. Keep it coming. Like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. You know the drill by now. This is Racing Post Live with two races coming your way the left The one on race the you show. haven't spoken about, the one thing you haven't spoken about yet, Dave, is the most important thing of the weekend outside of the racing is the Masters in Augusta. And I see there's plenty of social interaction around that. Are we a little bit in that, no? I, well, absolutely, yes, indeed. Let it know. I do. I do like to go for the Masters, actually. I'm not sure if my guy's teed off yet, but I'm with Steve Palmer, the Racing Post golf guru, put up uh, his next best was Cam Smith, the Australian for me, second last year. Masters, do we like it? I, I, lo I love watching it. I don't, I don't proclaim to have any sort of betting knowledge or anything like that. Even about the pets it. like watching it on the screen. Though. These are beautiful greens. It's, it's a shade of green you don't see anywhere else, isn't it, Augusta? <laughs> yeah, you can just sit there. Babies love it, all that sort of thing. Your dog's transfixed, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Not transfixed as a lot of things, but he will become Sunday if I'm, if I'm going down the final 18, mate, with a, with a good old play on it. That's quite right. Barry, have you got a shout for the viewers out there with a Masters. Yeah, I back Matt, Matt, Fit, Matt Fitzpatrick. Uh, Fitzy, at yeah. 60. Yeah, I think he'll go well. He's a deadly putter within eight or 10 feet, and his irons are really, really good. Just sometimes he has a tendency just to pull his drives, but I think he'll go well at a big price. I've, I've backed four or five golfers in it, Dave, and I'll, I'll mess around on the exchange, just trading in and out of positions. And I just think it's a great way to spend the evening, like Posty says there, you know, have a beer and watch the Masters for four nights. And Sunday evening's always a thrill. So, yeah, a lot to look forward to. Absolutely fantastic. Very too, relaxing, so. isn't it? Oh, you absolutely well. Right. Again, it depends. Well, it depends if you if you you know if you're in the final ball, two no, ball, you know. Then the dog's getting it. <laughs> well, it's absolutely. I've got to have to watch this on my own. Uh, yeah, TC, you like a bit of golf? Yeah, I love a bit of golf. Love playing a bit of golf. Not very good, but I like playing it. Uh, I played earlier this week and it snowed, which wasn't very good. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've backed. I think four. Um, John Rahm's the number one selection. I wouldn't say I'm a yeah, I've backed him for top Euro. Yeah, so that's another. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm a, a pro at golf or anything, but I just like watching something have an extra interest so people like it because it's four days done it? it goes on into the night when all the sports here is finished yeah thanks for that barry absolutely brilliant the masters is on so these selections if you want to know uh, of course and all, all steve palmer's selections and all the all the different bets he puts up specials these you know match bets all that sort of stuff you can get them on the website it kicked off at four o'clock in fact i don't know who's leading i'm sure barry will tell us that actually i'm Lee Westwood up against Dustin johnson isn't he we digress slightly but there's so much we could talk about the masters i think i think if you like you know, to have a punt on a on a sporting outcome that is that, that is one of the pinnacles, as Barry says. I think the, the Masters. It's, it's it's a it's good because it's like it fills the gap, doesn't it? If you play horse racing, you usually you see your selection run in anything from a minute after you place the bet until like a couple of days in most cases. Um, if you play, you know, some anti post, you've got like ages, but golf is four days. Uh, it's basically all throughout the day. On November each. last year, of course, yeah. as well, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, it's really, it keeps insane. you involved, doesn't it? It's good for punter interaction anyway. Yeah, I remember, I remember Bruce Mennington, who sits on this panel, as you all well know, was all over Bryson DeChambeau last yeah. November. And you knew, I think, after a round, that one was going astray. I just think you still managed to get Johnson somewhere on the line. But yeah, you, you put your hopes onto one, don't you? And then after a round, you're, you're having a look for another trade. So anyway, that's the Masters. We've got the 405 coming up. We're not that far away, actually, are we? Cat Tiger, really, really solid for Maxwell and Paul Nichols. Was he on a hat-trick, Nichols, isn't he? Today? Winners, yeah, today. Yeah, well, In this yeah, race. Yeah. Actually, that's a great point. I'll, I'll bring that up. I'm on Semetical, but Nichols has had 22 runners in the past 15 years, one place. Yeah, That must have been Pasha de Polder. You're tempted to say that, aren't you? Yeah, you'd be, t you'd be tempted. Oh, I wouldn't want to... Yeah. yeah, But it's not a race that Paul, in recent years... Has had a great record. And it's surprising because he, he really targets these hundred yeah. chases, doesn't he? You know, it's, it's it's a big thing for him in his operations. So and yeah, it's a, it's it's an interesting. Tordoff Express in two thousand and two. Oh, wow. he's he's. It, was that with Posse last or someone like that riding it? That was last winner. Pa Pasha de Polder was fourth, Barry in two thousand and seventeen. So I think that probably would be the place, wouldn't it? Uh, okay, all right. So uh, I I'm going to attempt to call these over the national fences. You'd have to, of course, your fall was at the beach, wasn't it? Yeah. So if you I'll grimace when it was. comes up on the screen, we shall forgive you that one. Uh, but I said to you, didn't I, in the office, I said, I, I said, did you sort of earn your stripes when that happened? You know, you, you jockey up, I fell at Beecher, and you were like, oh, I didn't go out in my career, man. I think it's the most <laughs> bizarre thing I've ever heard. I don't know, <laughs> I, you know, as in, it wasn't something I set out to do, you know, as in a... I don't know, it'd be something you could tell the grandchildren, oh, I fell at Beecher's, you know. I don't even, I don't think I've even, I don't, I've not even touched Beecher's, you know. You know not been up to it, you know. I don't, no. I've just seen it on television. But it, there's, like a lot of things in horse racing, you know, 
Beecher's Brook at Aintree. Everyone knows what that is, don't they? For, for children's tales, all sorts of things. You know, Dick Francis novels. It's a, Beecher's Brook is like Frankie Dettori, isn't it? You know, the late uh, John McCrick. People all over the world sort of knew where they were in horse racing. Beecher's Brook, I would say, is one of the most famous things about the National. And that's why when you told me you fell at it, I was like, oh, I claim to fame there. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. As in, I'd have rather gone over it, to be honest. But well, I'm anyway, sure connections yeah. went over the moon yeah. with you, but uh, it, it, it was a tricky horse you rode, wasn't it? He's a nice old horse, but he just, he just wasn't always the greatest jumper in the world. Master so. Man. Mark, yeah, Mark Man. Mark yeah, Man. Yeah. Was that Richard Lee? Yeah, I mean, he ran, he ran since he was about 15 or 16. I think he won when he was like 16, you know. So he's a like testament a to Richard Lee's of those, skills yeah. of keeping the horses sweet for so long. He was but, very uh, good at that, wasn't he? Yeah. He, could be, he could be slightly ignorant and disrespectful of offence at times, you know. Not Richard Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Lee could be a bit. He could be a bit disrespectful at times. Well, he's, he's quite rude to me at times. Well, time. Kerry, who of course has taken over the reins, she's got an opinion or two. Absolutely, has she got anything in this? No, I saw she had a non-runner earlier on the day. They've had a good season as well. Okay, they got, so the, they got the horse won a couple at Cheltenham this year. Runs in the top and tomorrow. Oh, Stone control. Yeah, yeah. In those famous colours, they're famous colours. They're prominent colours for her, aren't they? Yeah, Happy yeah. Diva. Mm. Oh, happy Diva. Will Rosef, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Is it? Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you would know, of course. That was mm. that was part of your you know, your career stats. Of course, that was your big win, wasn't it? Yeah. Mountainous. Le Bow Bye. Le Bow Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so close. It was beaches you fell out, wasn't it? it wasn't it? <laughs> it wasn't the railway fence. If I can differentiate what these fences are, I don't know. But it's one of the it's one of the pleasures of watching them, isn't it? And what horse is going to come alive then up the front? What horse is going to run massive at odds? Could it be Dashing Perk? I suppose he could be one that really comes to light. Looks like Derek O'Connor's going to have a bit of the action. He's got Fred Arici up there as well. Barry's pick, of course, uh, with Gina Andrews on late night pass. A lot of money now for late night pass. Barry, they're coming in for you. Yeah, into 11 to 2 now, Dave. Really smashed up along with Billaway at the head of the market to the two best backed horses in the race. Billaway now into 9 to 4. Bang on 9 to 4. 3.25. Cat Tiger on the drift out to 9. Samatigal is 10.5. Some man 14. And Mighty Stowaway, big prices 40 plus into 16.5 now for uh, Sneezy Foster. Yeah, and the, and the Jamie Cod. The Codfather effect coming into play. Zach Baker on Calaro Boy. He's a horse that likes to get on with it. He could be up there as well. So good luck wherever you're playing in the 405. Oh, what a pleasure to see them coming out onto the screen now and the famous fences in behind them. And National Course, as expected, looks absolutely tip top condition. Who's that being kept away from them? Not Cat Tiger, is it? No, that's Tango, Tango de Jouy. Tango de Jouy. Really? Yeah, okay, doing a look fabulous at the moment. Not wanting any part of it early. I don't know, that puts you off slightly, TC, doesn't it, when you've got one of these quirky characters? You well, know? yeah, you just want to see everything go right, don't you, and just like line up like all I'd the other horses. Um, I'd say it was just that he was down to the start later. Yeah. So I just think we've seen Dash and Perk come in yeah. and Sam Whaley Cohen there. Yeah, It'll be interesting to see what he's going to try and do now. Yes. As, you know, I think he's going to try and barrel his way through them. So. Well, it's Whaley Cohen. He can get away with it, can't he? I think, probably. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> oh, I think he probably can. He's won most of the races out there. I remember seeing Sam Whaley Cohen at Kingston Blunt. The point to point, yeah. to my, which I keep telling you is where I want to be going back. Of, of, of all the destinations yeah, in the world, that's the way I want to be. I remember seeing him before he won the Gold Cup on long run. He was very calm and collected that day, that's for sure, for a man that had the favourite in the Gold Cup. So don't you worry about Sam over these fences. Uh, what's that then? It's just playing up a little bit. Something out the back, isn't it? Is that We're off. Is that Frederici? Well, we are off and running then in the 2021 Aintree Fox Hunter. And as expected, we talked about this postie. They're going hammer and tongs over the first, then they're quieting down. But lots of things want the leads, and your son man's like, oh, we've lost one. Was that Dashing Perk? Dashing Perk's Perk's gone. Unbelievable. Sam Wayne Cohen gone at the first. I said, don't you worry about Sam. The curse is it. Unbelievable. Is that uh, Frederici? No. No, no. It's uh, Dan Cherryman's mount. Uh, Kashmir Peak has gone as well. Kashmir Peak has gone. One of the outsiders then out the back. And I'll tell you what, Mighty Stirway, if you weighed in with Jamie Cotty, He's going to have to weave all of his magic skills here because that's not taking a cut at all. But up front, who's in Pascal, then? Golden Taboogan, some man lead them over the chair. Cousin Taboogan, then James. Uh, cousin Taboogan, cousin, cousin Pascal. Pascal cousin Golden Pascal. Taboogan, some man. Okay. I was, I'll tell you why I was caught there because James King has won this race before. And Andrew's son, of course, he used to be the West Country uh, representative here at the Racing Post. And two are really hammer and tongs looking down the pack. They're all over the water jump fire. Yeah, Mighty Stowaway's not enjoying this at all, is he? He's out the back. I think, Barry, we can put another zero on him. What's the market saying after the first few fences? Uh, Bill away 3.75, so bang on 11 to 4. It's 7, Cat Tiger 16, Sameti Gal, late night pass 7.6, Suman into 8, 
Uh, just scrolling down to see the other one. Cousins, cousin Pascal is forty-four at the moment. Would you believe, Dave? Mm. Yeah, that's that's wide open. Golden. Yeah. Yeah, James Golden Kim, Bilgen is 26. He was second, wasn't he? We mentioned him in the, oh, who was he? Uh, of course, it was the, uh, it was the oh. uh, some man run, wasn't it, I think? Oh, another one's gone. What's that out the back? Um, oh, no, Milo not. Herbert on... Um, risk and roll, was yeah, it? Yeah, risk and roll, I think, is gone. Yeah. I've got one, right? Okay, so here we go then. We're on the far side. And yeah, they have definitely got into the rhythm now. I'll tell you what, Cat Tiger looks like he's enjoying himself, TC. Yeah, he got squeezed up early over the first fence, but uh, he's travelling really nicely now under he David Maxwell. Now. Sam Attergill upsides him as well. Look at the Billaway posty. Where is he? Billaway, he's got an outside sit mid division. Uh, Patrick Mullins just keeping him out of trouble there. Outside a late night pass, yeah. Mm. Sure, well. Okay, just so again, that. we thought he might get the run, wouldn't we? So, I'll tell you what, some man for the Christies, he's up there. I'll tell you what, late night pass. You see, he, was, he wasn't big, but he's absolutely fair. He was better than Billaway. Yeah, he was. And look, it's, you definitely don't need size. You don't round these fences. You need to be intelligent and nimble, and late night pass adapted well so far. It would be fascinating to see what Jamie Cole can do on, uh, on, uh, on Mighty Stairway. Finally, looks like he's picked up the bit a little bit and on we go. But as he got too far back, probably. Tango De Jui in midfield as well, uh, looking back for a couple of the others. What's that? Was oh, that looking well for the Richards team? I think that is his midfield as well. Uh, Federici, Derek O'Connor. Beaches. Surprisingly on the inside. Oh, all out over Beaches. I don't think any mishaps there. You're all right. You're I'm okay. Bad memories. We're all wins good. briefly. <laughs> Wait, looking, looking for Fitzy. Mickey or oh, Mickey Fitz is good. All gone to Boogan and Barbara. Bill away nearly went Bill there. Away. Get away. Okay, so Bill away is not enjoying no, this not whatsoever. Barry, he must have gone right out. What price is he now? Bill away. Amazingly, he's yeah, he's nine. He's nine point six now. Dave Cat Tiger into three point six. Some man into six and five eight. Oh, some man very pass. wide. Well, if we go around the elbow, then absolutely. Oh, it's a lovely sight, this isn't it? How we've missed it. How far to go, Dave? How we've missed it. Oh, don't ask me. I'll say we've got what, five out. <laughs> <laughs> we've got another circuit, Barry, I think. Oh, no. Unbelievable scenes. I think they are. Oh, I think this is what? It's got to be around about five out now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, come down to about five out, yeah. I like it. I'll post just nods. He's like, yeah, I think you're, I think you're probably you're right. right. You're right. You wouldn't know. You never got past beaches, man. <laughs> I got around the beacher. I got around the beacher chase. I'll have you know. Fantastic scenes. So that man, tiger travelling well and some man, cousin yeah, Pascal. Samantha Gale, Samantha Gale just showing he's just a little bit outpaced, isn't he? But he's still there. Was it? Is this a golden taboogan that's still there? No, oh. cousin Pascal, cat tiger nearly gone. Golden taboogan handy away. Samantha Gale up there, late night pass, still travelling well on the outside. Oh, the Looking for something that's creeping in a little bit closer. Can you see him? And they're at about eighth spot. What's that? I can't, what can't colours are we talking? Out. What one? Uh, just behind. You can see in the orange colours with the hood on. Kalara Boy, is that, yeah. is that it? That's Kalara Boy. Yeah, he's got. Oh, okay, all right, there. okay. Uh, so slightly different colours to the race card, to my eyes, but some man had really been going matched up. Yet. You haven't been matched yet, Barry. No, I haven't been matched yet. Four point one. You can see that. You, well, listen, there's still a chance of that. I'll tell you what, Samantha Gal's getting me a little bit excited now. I thought this would be the case. I said that pre-race, didn't I? What are we four out now? I think it must. No, be. no, 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 no. Running down to two out, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're coming up to two out. Unbelievable seas. Of course, this isn't the national. This is two mile five. And I'll tell you what, late night pass going really well with some man. So pretty, quite a few shouts. Cat Tiger still in there. I'll tell you what, we've all got a shower at the minute. This is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, we've all done brilliant. We were TC's selections. not moving. TC knows your Trent line. Fixed. He's, 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 he's in a trance. <laughs> it's because they're I'm nervous for Maxwell Here comes the David lead. Maxwell. I'll tell you what, he's sensing glory. He sends on the Cat Tiger. Yeah, he's five, the second last. 1.55. Two to one on oh, David Maxwell Tiger. now Could, and Cat Tiger. Could this be another Looks one all over. for the mighty champion trainer, Paul Nichols then. 12th champion title coming his way at Sandown in April. He's got, oh, I'll tell you what, it's, just, it's, not, it's not over, is it? Late night pass. We're matched. We're matched. Happy days. We're matched. Cousin Pascal was the one who ran massive odds up the front. He's not giving way either, is he? Look at Maxwell going for it. Aye, aye, David. Go and get each lady out. It's all good. He's going to get gub, TC. Unbelievable, TC. He's absolutely on the floor. It could be Barry Orr. Go on, Jim. Night pass. Could he possibly Go be? Go on, Jim. Fill away with it all over. I'll tell you what, Cousin Go on, Pascal. Jim. This is James King. James King's going to win this then. Cousin Pascal. Who saw that coming? Brilliant. It was absolutely massive prize. So John O'Shea, isn't it? This is not the first time that he's won this race. He kept it simple up front. Cat Tiger, you have to say, didn't quite get home. What was that break between the Leicester run and that 37? Ah, should have been fine for him, shouldn't it? He didn't quite get home. Late night pass would be your benchmark then in second. Great spin. Gina Andrews got Yeah, he is diminutive, isn't he? Looking yeah, he's not there. very big, yeah. 
Well, that was eventful. I think we can say that. We had some fun on the way round. Uh, trying to find all the colours on the race card. It was a nightmare. Billaway running on as well. He ran a great race, race considering how, how badly he was travelling at the halfway stage and jumping. He ran a great race, finished fifth. Wow, James King, take a bow. He must have thought when David Maxwell took it up. Do you think Dave's got a bit too soon? Is that, you know, I don't know. I mean, Cat Tiger did fight all the way to the line. He still finished third. Um, he did look like the most likely winner, but clearly at this point, just after the last, he, he got, kind of got swallowed up by uh, the first and the second. I think getting up the inside here for James King was crucial, you know. He actually owes his agent. Traded at 148 at this stage, just after jumping the last Cat Tiger. 148, two to one on. Um, late night. What on earth Late is that? Late night traded at 1.52, which is two to one on also. Clondor traded at 2.76, so plenty of in-running action there. Thankfully for the charity, we got matched, so we win 50 quid in the race. It's just a great way to use the exchange sometimes if you think a horse will trade short in running when you back him beforehand and lay him back in running. So we won 50 quid. We'd have bet to nothing. No matter what won the race, we were winning 50 quid. Happy days, Barry. Well done. It was hilarious. Wasn't it? Three out. He said, I've got nothing bad. I think it was three out anyway. Could have been six out as far as I was concerned. He was jumping the last. <laughs> it's out. It's out. of Pascal, we said what's going to run the flyer. What's going to run the one at massive odds? Wow. My goodness gracious me. So tell us a little bit about this chap then, Posty. I mean, he's he's obviously a point winner, isn't he? How many has he got? He's, he's actually only two from eight between the flags. What, this season? Well, no, in, in his career, point no, to point. No, he's not. He's really stacks of winners. What? What are you on about? Oh, Cousin Pascal yeah. is, yeah, sorry, yeah. Cousin Pascal is um, like, actually a very like, young horse on the upgrade. He won a novice under chase round Catterick impressively, but I think he was only winning like a restricted or... A, no, a, I remember this chap. Who did he chase home? He chased home Chamaron, didn't he, of course, at Leicester. Yeah, Leicester, yeah. And then won, won, won a novice under chase impressively yeah. at Catterick. But like, a horse very light on experience. Um... Like, yeah, James King rides a lot for us. He's a talented young man. Like you say, he's won this race before. Yeah, giving him a good old shout, wasn't he? He actually owes uh, his, his agent Ian Popham an apology because uh, Pop said he got him a ride on Cousin Pascal and the Fox Hunters, and he said, "Oh well, it's fine." Like, but in any chance you get me on anything better? So yeah, <laughs> he, he owes Pops an apology. So no, brilliant well, stuff all round. Yeah, brilliant. fantastic, and a, and a nine-year-old, so the youngest winner of this in the last eleven years. And again, it, TC, it just shows you when you get handy, get into a rhythm at Aintree. We've got two more races over the national fence is coming up one over the same course of distance tomorrow that's the top um, and then we go of course to the national we can always get something that just turns up out of nowhere according to the market no chance runs a massive race yeah exactly and that's what you have to factor in when you're betting these short price favorites like cloth cap and, and bill away there um you've got horses that don't maybe have the same level of form as as the market leaders but this is entry this is the grand national fences anything can happen um it's the risk you take when you when you're punting the, the jolly Absolutely. All right. So that's the penultimate race here on Racing Post Live. We've got the Red Rum Handicap coming up next for you at 4.40. My nap of the day comes up in this. It was one of my naps at the Cheltenham Festival as well. But before we get that, let's get the runners up on the screen if we can for the next. The race... Oh, well, we've been told not yet. We've been a bit quick there, I think. Still keep the social interaction coming in. We've got plenty of time in between races. We were talking about the Masters, weren't we? Before the Fox Hunters. What race meeting are you most looking forward to going back to? We have punted this out on the show. I said, what track would you like to go to? What race meeting? That's interesting. Mm. Well, Royal Ascot would be a treat. I'll be in here. But uh, it, 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 that would, that, that's always a treat, isn't it? Uh, Royal Ascot during the summer. What I prefer Glorious Goodwood about? myself. Do you? Yeah. You're a Panama man. Uh, not a Panama man, but Do I you? like staying down there. Well, it's actually. race course when the sun's out. Yeah. They call it, don't they? Rightly so as well, looking over the downs. Very nice. It's, yeah, that's, that, that is a fantastic meeting, TC. I mean, I just really want to get back on the track. I don't really Kenton. care. Yeah, Kempton on <laughs> Wednesday racing. night. Yeah, Mon yeah, yeah. <laughs> Windsor on a Monday. I mean, I'm, I just want to get back. I'm happy to watch any any kind of flat racing. Um, that draws me but in. What meeting? What meeting are you most looking forward to then this year? L actually looking forward to or looking forward to going to? Well, looking forward to? Yeah, see, let's Guineas, say probably. theoretically both. Okay, looking forward to the Guineas um, meeting at Newmarket. Going to? Probably Royal Ascot, but I mean, it's always Royal Ascot every year. Um, if I was being honest, it would probably be going to the US and going to like Keeneland to watch a, a race over there. Um, but I mean, I just want to get back on the track. I just want to see horses running around in a circle. That's what I've been waiting for for a, a year. So, What about yourself, way. Barry? What meeting are you most looking forward to for the rest of the year? Let's say you're going to be able to go. Uh, oh, I like going to Chester. I think that's a great meeting. It's good, the main meeting in Chester in particular. Uh, I like tomorrow in... In Aintree, it would be great. Lady Day, that's always a fantastic uh, a fantastic spectacle. Uh, Leopardstown for any of its midweek fixtures. Go up and do a bit of work and meet a couple of mates and have a few beers and a couple of bets. That's always great. It's not far from my house here. and 
whole house, where do you stop? Where do you start? You know, I, I, any race meeting is a good race meeting now at this stage after being bereft of it for over oh. 12 months. It's, it's, it is hard to think back. I mean, it's, it, it, it does feel like it's been quite a long year already, doesn't it? And, you know, when you can get out to the race course and all that sort of thing, some interesting shouts there. Yeah, Chester May meeting. My goodness gracious me. You mentioned Ladies' Day tomorrow at Aintree. I'll tell you what, all the tabloids are going to have to be searching for other stories, aren't they? The, the scenes at Aintree on Ladies' Day would even make it down under, wouldn't they? You know, oh. it'd, just, it'd be on Fox News, wouldn't it? You know, it was insane. But, but Aintree's just the great, the best fun, isn't it? Like, you know, as in, you must have some great memories of it. I've got <laughs> I've got some. Old, I've got some old memories. I, I told Posty a time about when I went up when Monty's Pass won the national that year. It's fair to say I enjoyed myself that year. It's been it's been a difficult. You've been back or not? I've, I haven't been back. I haven't been back. I haven't been able to go back mainly because I've been working it. But uh, I, well, yeah. Listen, you've, it's one of those things in life you've got to do. If you, it, I, I know you're slightly younger than us, TC. But have you been to an entry? Slightly. <laughs> no, no. I've never been to an entry. Never been to an entry. Um, I do want to go though. It does look great fun. Never been to entry. I don't think, well, no, exactly, absolutely. I said, I'll, I'll a long t- way from Basingstoke to, to Liverpool, unless I'm going to Anfield for a game. But, You've um, just told the public where you live, TC. That's, 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 I mean, that's, a, that's an absolute You're a Liverpool fan pass. then? Yeah, and if you're going to ask why, my dad sports Everton and, uh, and my brother. And then. You can see the measure of the man here, got a competitive chap. Yes, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. You go blue, I'll go red. Thank you very much. Exactly that. All right, okay. Uh, all right, ah, oh, there they are. We digressed, uh, which we know you, you, you love it when we do this. And uh, Post is trying to tease me there about Aintree, but we must return for the 440. Is the Red Rum Handicap one of my favourite races of the week? Two miles, fast and furious, always wide open. There's been a proper gamble in this, though, Barry. Looks like he's levelling out slightly, but Destrier for the Skeletons. Yeah, been really, really strong, Dave. Went in at 9.2 on the exchange. Uh, has been matched at the lowest six, 7.2 now, so just drifting out a little bit. Uh, last chance saloon for him as well, but really, really strong at the head of the market. Uh, getaway Trump, uh, Paul Nichols, horse, he gives that a very positive mention if he's on a going day, 10.5. Mm. Grey Diamond, 10. 11.5 moon over Germany, a previous winner of the race, and it's uh, 14 bar them. I'm, g- I'm going to back two horses here. So basically, I'm going to dutch two horses in the race. I'm going to have 25 quid in each of them. Moon over Germany, uh, who won it uh, by 10 lengths, like I said, in 2019 off 136. He's 145 now. So he's gone up, what, nine pounds. But I still think he'll run a big race here. So we're going to have 25 quid in him. Again, happy to be a price taker here. So wins is about 260 quid. And Sully, uh, uh, Sully Doc is a horse that I backed into plate. Um, he's a horse I backed the time before that in Ascot. That race worked out particularly well. Now, in the plate, I don't know what happened to him, but he did get chopped up on the bend a bit. He wasn't beaten that far. I think that race has worked out well as well. The, the shunter won it. He was only beaten 13 and a half lengths at the finish. Uh, I think he'll run a big race as well off, uh, as Mark says, the same one three six. So he's going to win us about 350 quid. So just back in the boat to them, Moon over Germany and Sully Duck. Mm, very interesting indeed, because that means we must give Tom Collins the floor, because I tell you what, listen, it's a long show, this. You and Barry, arm in arm all of a sudden. <laughs> yes. It's one of your better plays of the day this time, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't really fancy much in the in the previous races, like only tentative selections. I, I really like this race for a punting um, standpoint. I know it's 5-1 to one the field and it's wide open, but there's plenty of value out there, I think. Um, I do like Moon over Germany. He's probably my, my number one selection in the race. Jordan Gameford, we sort of great effect on the shunter at Cheltenham. And we've seen him on many other occasions. He's obviously well worth his claim. Um, he gets bored moon over Germany. He's just five pounds higher, I think, for when he won this race uh, back in 2019. He's 12 pounds higher in the ratings, but take off the seven for, for Jordan Gainford. Now that's interesting, isn't it? I want to stop you there because mm-hmm. a, lot, a, a, a lot of people don't factor that in, do they, when they're doing their math? Their math. Uh, you know, it, if you're re- reading an analysis, that sort of thing, we don't tend to put in uh, the rider's claim. Mm-hmm. We, we say it may be an inexperienced rider or along those lines, but you are actually factoring in the seven. Yeah, I mean, you've got to. Uh, this jockey, Jordan Gainford, I know he's young and lacks experience, but. He is as good as a fully fledged professional. Um, therefore, it's a cheap seven pounds. Um, you've got to factor in, really, haven't you? The horse is only five pounds higher, and he won this race in a very impressive fashion. Now, I know he's a 10 year old now, not an eight year old, um, but I think he's got a great chance at the prices. And the other one is Grey Diamond for Sam Thomas. Mm. Sam Thomas had a great season, a really good season, and he's striking at 33% in the last two weeks, two winners from six runners. Um, this Grey Diamond was very headstrong early in his career when he was with Alan King. And they didn't really strike lucky for uh, Nigel Twiston Davis when he moved. Uh, he won the f- on reappearance for him and then finished placed on a few occasions. But that last effort at Sandown, I was really impressed with. And I think if they go a quick gallop, then uh, Grey Diamond's got a great chance in this race as well. He looks well handicapped to me.
Mm, I just wonder whether he's better going right-handed. That's something that I might have marked up with him. But, uh, yeah, Sam, I'll I, I tell you what, Sam Thomas is, he's really shone this year, isn't mm. he? He's, in particular, his strike rates in bumpers are superb. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, he's a great, he's a really good guy as well. But, for I mean, for a long time, it just didn't seem like he was going to crack the training job at all. And yet, things have transformed this season. I mean, I, I'm sure he'd love to know the reason why. Maybe more quality. I, I, I don't know whether he's got a new facility, but I think I think he trades down at Die Walters' place as far I as say, I know. It, that would not be a bad patron to, to no. have when you're starting off, would it? Not at all, but I, th I think for, for plenty of time, like he'd be almost pre-training some of the horses and they'd be getting shipped out to Nicky Henderson and that. But it yeah. seems because things have gone well, Die is leaving more and more of them with him. And he had the lovely bumper horse that won at Newbury not that long ago. I can't think of the name of the horse. He did, at the, on the Betfair card, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, I can't remember his name. On the listed either. bumper there, like, yeah, which yeah. is lovely prospect. And look, it's great great for him. I mean, like, like, like TC says, his strike rate is about 33% or something like that. Is is fantastic, really. I mean, for, for a jump trainer, I, I'd imagine there's not many operating a strike rate like that. Mm, so, like Barry, again, you're taking two plays here, headed by Moon over Germany. The, you remember Moon over Germany won this in 2019. He then went to the county hurdle, probably, and what they thought was hopefully going to be a prep for this one. Again, he finished sixth as well in that. So, he's horse that tends to turn up on the big days, and he's so don't worry so much about the form figures. He's yep. prime for the day. Henry de Bromhead needs to bounce back. Well, yeah, I mean, we didn't really find out much from Jason the Militant. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a negative, his, his yard form. But then again, it's not a positive, is it? So you do have to factor in. Posty. I think the, the claims of Destria are obvious, you know, as in, and like they, again, talking to Harry and that, they, it, you get the, the vibe that whether you had a setback early in the year or what happened, but this has been the sort of plan for quite a long time. And mm. we've discussed before, they're pretty adept at, bringing plans together, you know, as in when, when, they, when they lock their eyes on something, they're, they're fairly useful at getting it there and getting it over the line. Um, the other one was, uh, I, I just quite like getaway Trump, especially the, the form of, of Nichols earlier on. Uh, he was impressive at Doncaster. I think he's still lower than his hurdle mark. And, and uh, it was as simple as that, really. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, yeah. It, it, uh, getaway Trump. Yeah. Top weight, isn't it? But he's on a four timer. Is Paul Nichols on the day. What a difference a month makes. And Harry Cobden is on. And it, like you say, this could the hustle and bustle of this race, if he just gets into a rhythm. And I think he'll get a fairly prominent sit. And, and again, I think that is a big thing in this race. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know what the trends say, but I, it, it seems a race that you often want to be sort of up there in, in, in the van or in and amongst the pace, you know. OK, well, there's, there's lots and lots of runners you can see on the screen. Uh, Posty's headline tip is Getaway Trump. Mine is an old friend. You'll remember the Grand Annual at Cheltenham. If you're watching Cheltenham Week, I was very keen on On the Slopes. And turning in, Tom Cannon, I was like, hang on a minute, aye, aye, we're going to get this. But not for the first time, despite the fact it was quicker ground, the hill just found him out. And people that were afterwards saying, did he go too soon? I mean, it's just that sort of horse. You've got to just let him stride on, do his thing. And the, I think this track and trip will be absolutely ideal for him. I'm not so worried about the fact that, that he might have the Cheltenham mark on him as well because that was really the start of his season, this horse, having come back in a jumper's bumper. And I think there's lots of value to be had there on, on the slopes for Chris Gordon. I think he can I think he will again he will have a big say for a long way and he's still handicapped to win a good one. I think if you think about that Imperial aura and simply the bets form uh, as a novice. So it's there for me, marker 140. Exactly the same on the slopes. What are your selections for this? Keep them coming in. Final race of the day, the 440 then. And the panel mainly splitting. I guess if I had to go for another one here, it probably would be Destrier. We haven't really, you know, you know, we should talk about him a little bit more. Lots of good judges on this. I mean, Paul Keeley said that he's been mapping this race out for him himself since December for Destrier. Good ground. One visit to the track. Third in the manifesto, wasn't he? Uh, you know, Good um, run, yeah. And you know, absolutely. So he's off a marker 136. Steve Mason, our jumps handicapper, he's napped him today. Says it could prove lenient. Well, we know it's lenient. He was 150 only a couple of runs ago, wasn't he? The I mean, he, third in the Holden, Holden Gold Cup. Only beat three lengths, sort of eight, well, not, not even 18 months ago, 151. I mean, a, a, anything near to that form and, and he should be winning this comfortably off 136. Yeah. I guess the dangers are a little bit, you know, with 18 runners going to a post, they're going to, you know, any, when you're taking uh, what looked like it was going to be a short price, I have to say, I wouldn't really want to be laying him at that price. I don't think it's not really a layers race, this is it, I don't think. As, you know, as Barry's doing, he's Dutch. And look, Destrier can run huge. He was on my shortlist. It's just a price thing for me. It was a little bit too short when he went under fours, but he's going back out. You may have a differing opinion. Let's see uh, some of the socials then. Okay, Social Corner, Den Ray, Editor Dejit, 
for me each way. Should we have a talk about that for Gary Moore, Tom Collins? Yeah, it's a G. He's a, only a seven-year-old. He's a really nice jumper, this horse. Um, I'm just not so sure he's as well handicapped as, uh, as others in the race. I mean, he won really well last time at Newbury. Good grounds, clearly. Worked out that form. Yeah. good. Shut the box finally got his uh, head in front of the yeah, yeah. Um, good grounds, obviously, a plus to him. And on, on the uh, RPR he achieved that day, you'd suggest he is still well handicapped. But I think there are others in here that... Um, may have gone under the radar a little bit more than Ed to the Jeep because he's been running well all season apart from on his penultimate effort. Mm, but he arrives with the one next to his name, so good luck to you, Dent. Out there, what else have we got coming up on the screen? Any more social interaction coming up? Yeah, Chris Timms comes back and says, two each way for me here, like the panel. Ah, and, okay, oh, and basically, you are TC, Chris Timms. <laughs> yeah, Chris, uh, he's a good actually, judge. You're actually the, the reverse of his initials as well. So, hello, <laughs> Chris Timms. Send us in a picture, Chris. If you're anything like TC, listen, it's, 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 a, it's an easy chair to, to fill, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic scenes. Yeah, so you're with TC all the way. Happy days. Uh, I think that this is going to be a real spectacle to watch this. Cannot wait. Have we got one more coming in? Oh, no, one more on the screen, I'm being told. Uh, okay, Evan Nuremberg comes back on and says, I like on the slopes. Agree. Happy days. Great stuff. Um, my father-in-law told me off for saying happy days quite a lot, actually. Do you think I say it quite a bit? Or is you it, do like happy days. Do yeah. I, it's yeah. a go-to saying. Yeah, nice saying, though. Nice it's saying. Worse. It is. You know, there are worse. Absolutely, yeah. Happy what what about your Cheltenham hoodoo right now with On the Slopes? Well, I as I said, like your 158, I did say when I was previewing the horse that I'm not too worried about it. No. Because I think that he's, his season is probably... He's not one of these over-the-top horses, let's put it that way. Late night pass ran all right in the, in the Fox Hunters. He did, he did, he did, he did. It's, I guess at the moment with that, you know, when you see the first three races going to horses that have completely ignored the Cheltenham Festival, of course, trickier this year because we didn't have so many runners at the Cheltenham mm. Festival, did we? You know, your social runners were out of it and some of those horses like Protector at and Mon Morale, so impressive, Mon Morale, wasn't he? Uh, they have specifically targeted this. Yep. Um, where do you sit with those horses like Mon Morale who won't have the Cheltenham tick next to his name going into next year's festival? It can be a big thing, can't it? It's like, you know, when we get nearer to the Cheltenham, will he get up the hill, all that sort of thing, you know? Yeah, without doubt. I mean, like, we, we've seen it with Shaq and Poursois, didn't we, in the, in the champion chase, that it was, I mean, I, I personally didn't think it would be a factor. And do you I think they'll give him a spin? Do you think they'll go to the new... The I'd imagine so. No, knowing, November knowing, novice knowing chase what, there. what Paul does, I mean, he, he likes to... He likes to run a nice novice chaser there, doesn't he? You, could, could he go to what, Chepstow in October, Cheltenham in November, and, and then work back from the festival if it went well in those first two races from there? Clan de Zobo, you have to say, is the star performer so far, TC. Oh, definitely. You, it, you know, a dual King George winner taking out the bowls so easily, but excitement-wise... Yeah, I mean, he bounced right back to his best today. There's no doubt about that. He really kicked clear of his rivals. It just wasn't a great grade one. Um, but at the same time, you can't grab him because the effort was really good. Uh, interesting to see what RPR he achieved today, um, mm. whether, for, whether it was a career best or not. The handicappers usually have, will be, when the big festivals will be scurrying to do that. I wonder if we already might have that. I'm we not might sure. Do. So, yeah, TC will check that out. doing that again, overrating on, on a performance of that. Mm. Like, what, what did he actually achieve today? I'd suggest he's probably... Oh, am I being harsh and said he ran to his mark? You might have done. I mean, it wasn't a very good race in general, like with depth. No, when a horse wins a grade one on the bridle, pretty much, you're tempted to say it's a career best, isn't it? But with the perhaps lack of, lack of top-level opposition against him, I suppose. Yeah, I think you'd be hard pushed to say it was a career best. You handicap it through Clondor Castle, probably... I'd imagine so, yeah. racing post yeah. handicap, didn't he? He's been a handicapper there, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's Jenny, you couldn't overrate him off the back of that and... They're talking about the Bet365 Gold Cup in Sandown at the end of Are the season. From which he, yeah, yeah, that was the chat. For Clan de Zobo? Mm. Wow. That is a, oh, that's a bit of a, that is a bit of a curveball, isn't it? Three mile five. Yeah, massive shot in the arm for the race. I mean, like, <laughs> would you say that... Keep loads at the handicap as well. Yeah. yeah. How many pounds would you say today's performance from Clan de Zobo was better than his second to secret investor? He achieved an RPR of 173. When Today? Se no, when second oh, to secret okay. investor. His career best is 176. Oh, that's, that's, that's it's a career best if, if you're going off that basis. Much better than that run. So what, it's not hard to say. What mark is he, TC? Though. This is Clan de Zobo. Uh, 169. 169. So what, the handicapper, what? Would you give him a pound for that? For the Because he's... It, well, if he's, if he's was Clondor Castle today? 155 or something like that? Or? Uh, 160. 160. Is he? Yeah, 160. Yeah, and he's beaten by 26 lengths. Mm. It's, it's definitely a career best on RPRs, I think. Mm. The handicapper can't rate it literally, can he? It was like goshing against some for someone. He'd be one mid-180s horse, you know. But then Native River, right? He's rated 170. He was beating 44 lengths. He, I, know, I know he didn't yeah. travel. I know. Um, 
but still they're good they're good quality horses albeit not probably not their best so the season Got finale who didn't think that was coming up did you for Clanders Oba I mean that's a he, that is a proper aggressive Paul Nichols move but not we didn't see I mean your face summed it up you're a bit a bit shocked by that and if you had a horse that you've been planning all season to get into a nice mm. low way in that race you're thinking we're going to be miles out the handicap all of a sudden yeah and I mean Going back to what we were saying about sort of flat tracks and stuff, it sort of flies in the face of that, doesn't it? Going to Sandown on the, on the last day of the season, and I mean, maybe he's just feeling that that, that decent ground is just imperative to the horse. Wouldn't have been around Sandown before, would he? I don't think Clans is over. Uh, I, without, I mean, make like, a great TC, TC might the, see over but, the impossible to spot railway fence. Yeah, I mean, let's hope he knows when they're coming up. It's supposed to be the best sort of spectacle in jump racing, now, isn't it? As long as you know when they are. <laughs> yeah. they are. He's yeah. run once at Sandown. Uh, he ran ah. in the Silly Isles in 2017, finished last of five, beating 41 lengths. So that's almost, it, it, you're, I don't, I, I don't want to say you're happy with that, but when a horse runs too badly to be true, you know, it probably wasn't the track, don't you? So um, that was sort of like Houston, we got a problem sort of time. But um, so absolutely amazing scenes. Clan is over. Thanks for that, Barry. Is, um, yeah, so you can get all your members section, of course, all your quotes coming down. Uh, Paul Keeley's tips for tomorrow. Tom Segal, price-wise, 6 o'clock in your members section. 9 p.m. for the digital paper edition as well. And Edward Spearing comes onto the screen and says, the King of May, each way. Oh, I sort of forgot this guy was running, Edward, if I'm honest. And he's a horse, I'm uh, fair to say, has flattered to deceive. Would you agree with that, Posty? Yeah, I would. I mean, definitely. I mean, like obviously, prep running or weather bumper behind, not that for you say. And, and like you say, he's, 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 he's definitely bits of form. I mean, the three-quarter length defeat behind first flow and reads well in this sort of race. Yeah. But... Uh, I fancied him that day as well. Did you? Yeah, first flow. Yeah, I, I, I did. And he was last off the bridle that day. Well, he probably wasn't the first flow right-handed and fiddled a few fences that we know and love. Yeah. Yeah, he is interesting. Jumper's bumper last time. These colours, of course, we associate mm. with Aintree with definitely red. Red, yeah, definitely. I mean, Brian Ellison knows what he's doing. He's a very shrewd trainer. And oh. uh, the, I think the, the six, five-day break is, is interesting for the King of May. But on form, he does have a lot to find. And just going back to the uh, Bet365 Gold Cup, I spoke to Christian Williams as part of a an entry preview actually. Um, and I think he's running Kitty's Light in that race. And he was very confident. And Christian knows what he's talking about. He's also running Five Star Getaway on the same card, I believe. So Kitty's Light is the guys in the studio, Rob Lee, our senior producer, it's his horse. He did a piece with Christian, I think, uh, before that went on its. He's a remarkable horse, isn't he? Because he's so young. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Five year old, isn't he? What mark is Kitty's Light off there? I'm not sure, well, but did he win at Kelso? Was it Kelso last time? It was somewhere. He's pre- yeah. well, anyway, Kitty's Light. We're talking about the Bet Three Six Five Gold Cup, the season finale later this month, which we think Clander Zobo is going to go for. Would that put him out of the handicap? I don't know. He, he, he looks like just the sort of horse. One three nine. One three nine. That's a lovely handicap mark. If you've got a young progressive chaser, that is. He's it? out the handicap now. He will, it will, if Clan turns up, yeah. that's out the handicap. Wow, isn't it great this jump season? The narratives and the. Would that stop them running? Go down. Yeah, what? Sorry, if Jack Tudor's claim three as well. <laughs> Jack Tudor will probably ride and claim three, won't he? And that, bring him into it. That's, uh, that should knock a couple of points off his price, as, as, as far as I'm concerned, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> There's been an on-running, on-running joke since, of course, Spotter's Corner ran in the cross-country in November when Barry said, I'm not sure about this Jack Tudor, that the experience over fence. Of course, he ran a blinder into third ever since. It's been a little in-joke here for the you're viewers. You're kind of misquoting me there as well. I didn't say that. I said I was just... I, Never. I, oh, see, I think you were on the show as well, were you? I I'm, I can't across remember. country in Cheltenham, and we said we were just making the, the distinction that a lot of the top Irish jockeys wouldn't ride in the cross yeah, country I think for fear think of was, going yeah. the wrong yeah. way. Yeah, and that he might have been a little bit inexperienced for it at the time. I've, 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 I've been, I've, I've felt the ridicule of Mister <laughs> of Dave off the back of that statement. You felt the, rid- the season. Welsh national running rider, but no, yeah, I, 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 t- I, t- I t- took your point, and actually, you know, Jack is going to be. Is going to be hopefully one of the stars of the next ten years, isn't it? I think you. I mean, Mickey Fitz. I, I spoke to him on a feature show we did last week, and he was he was giving him a massive shout out, saying you know he's one of the guys. There's a couple of young guys that are coming through that he was, you know, in Britain. Yeah, he was very happy with. Yeah, I think there's there's there's, there's, well. there's, a, there's a good bunch of young riders coming through at the moment. I mean, uh, Danny Menemen up north seems to, seems to model his riding on Brian Hughes. Very one of your young guys that you mentor. He was in the he was in the papers, wasn't he, for not necessarily the right reasons recently. Oh, poor old Charlie on on of course Dragon Bones, wasn't it? Of course. Yeah, yeah, took a hell of a slap, didn't he? I mean, uh, Barry all six spectacular winner at Doncaster. Yeah, spectacular. It was a uh, naughty Dragon Bones, sort of cocking a jaw and then diving back in. And it, was, he, uh, it, it dragged him all the way. Did you see that, TC? Yeah, I saw it on Twitter. Yeah, fair play to him. He came out, didn't he? So he's a tough little guy, obviously. 
Yeah, no, for sure. But you've got to be, haven't you? Yeah, but uh, yeah, he's he's another talented rider coming through, and, and like you say, with Jack Tudor and people like that. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, even I think we've seen Lorcan Williams doing well down at Taunton today, and there's there's a good bunch of young young riders, plenty of young Welsh lads as well, like Connor Brace as well. Chuck him into the mix, you know. There's they're strong old team. Big fan of Connor Braces, yeah. Is he, what's he claiming? Three still, Connor Braces? I think so, yeah. 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 He's very, very good. So the future is bright with the skills of the saddle, despite the fact that Ricky Johnson has now departed. Oh, shores! The ambassador, of course, former ambassador of racing post, Richard Johnson, has retired. Amazing end of an era there. Let's get another one on then. Cormac Devine comes on as his. Ah, right, interesting. Any thoughts on Zanza, lads? Well, more letters than form figures at this point. But it was a tough ask, I think, TC, going into the Grand Annual with that full next to his name. Do you think that might have been a confidence-restoring thing? Any chance for Zanza? Well, he just, he just can't jump. Um, if he jumps, he's very well handicapped and he'll go close, but he, he always makes a mistake. It, he made was stuff at Newbury, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that was the one day he actually jumped all right. He made a mistake at Cheltenham in the Grand Annual in the second, um, at the second, and then obviously he was coming into that race on the back of a full... I think if he if he has a clear round, then he's a big player. Um, but you're taking a big risk that he's going to have a clear round. Newbury would be a much nicer track to find a rhythm on a an ordinary jumper than again than Aintree for me. Yeah, they do seem to find horses out these marmo fences, don't they? At the speed they go. Uh, just reading Philip Hobbs's quote about uh, Zanza there, he said he was very unlucky at Cheltenham. He was nearly bought down. So perhaps that P is a little bit misleading. I remember Tom Segal, price-wise, was very sweet on his chances there. They tend to bounce back, those horses. Uh, we've been talking about the performances of the day so far. It's all been about Paul Nichols so far, isn't it? Uh, and Paul Nichols' getaway trump in this, just seeing if Paul's got anything else in the race. No, nope, just getaway trump. Paul can run sometimes two or three in these sort of races. Maybe that's a tip in itself, Charlie Post going that way. Let's get a further market update. Just about to go off. Sun shining now at Aintree Barrier. Destre, what price? Yeah, 6.0, so 5-1 to one flat, getaway Trump 14. Great diamond, that was as batch as big as 19. It's nearly half in price into 10.5. Now, Moon over Germany is a flat 10. Um, and outside of that, on the slopes, a few quid for that 12.5. You'll be glad to hear it, Dave. He's, I just think he's that's a, that's a nice value price to track should suit. So as long as Cheltenham hasn't left that mark, I think on the slopes he's going to run a big. He's a lovely, lovely animal. That one. We've got Eileen Dover coming up in the bumper as well when we go off air as well. We could see some fireworks. They should be massively impressive in two runs of Bam Sly. Yeah, I mean, phenomenally impressive. I mean, you, you could, we could have make an argument that she probably should have been going for the champion bumper at the festival, you know, and seeing how she, she, she fared there. And it, it sounds like after today we'll be seeing her on the flat, I think, during Looks the summer. That way, anyway, doesn't so, it? Yeah. Yeah. Classic winning trainer, Pam Slive. What, uh, uh, Barry, just quickly, what price Arlene Dover now for the viewers out there? We'll, we'll be off air when she runs, but she was looking really short to me in the last. Yeah, she's one nine five now, Dave. So just a shade of odds on. Um, she has been matched as low as one eight zero, so four to five, but and as high as 2.98, but uh, yeah, she's still a shade of odds on. It looks like she'll go off that. Mm, one of the bankers, I imagine lots of you have got doubles out there with Mon Miral, for example, Clandes Oboe maybe running on to that as well. L.A. Bell, a good rival though. Giving the weight, isn't it? But a lot of people weren't happy with the tactical positioning in that race. Uh, third in the champion bumper, of course. It was, a, it was a messy race, wasn't it, where Rachel Blackmore dictated and, and anyone off the pace was going to be at a disadvantage. She so. has won at Aintree, of course, isn't she? A, 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 a L.A. Bell, I think, isn't she? She was really impressive on a flat track early on in the season. Let me see if I've got that right. Yeah, listen, there are value alternatives there, but I know a lot of you have napped that on the week. She is, of course, in distance winner, L.A. Bell. All right, flags up then. Final time here on Aintree Thursday. Off we go. Uh, a couple ridden right out the back, looks like... Out the back at the moment. Sayo's out the back. Uh, the Manus fourth string, I think. Brell and Dar ridden cold as well. But up front, it is J uh, Joshua Moore, of course, isn't it? On editor Dujit, who goes forward. Uh, good luck for the social selection out there. Grey Diamond are right up there as well. Famous uh, Sue Smith colours of Joke Dancer are up there as well. They're going some lick, aren't they, Posty, into these first line of three? Yeah, there's a good gallop on. I mean, this race is often run at a really high tempo. But like I say, I think it often does pay to be up and around the pace as well. All jumping okay so far. Well, no, well, no notable, notable mistakes that I saw. And if you miss the first couple of fences, you're just on the back foot, right, with this track? Hugely on the back foot. I mean, like, jumping is key. The ability to travel and jump at speed is massive around this mile May track. I'll tell you who's done that exemplary at the moment. It's getaway Trump in midfield, top weight for Paul Nichols. He's upsize moon over Germany. TC? Yeah, everything's going nicely, apart from Billingsley and Brelland Dow, both of whom are shifting out to their right when they're jumping. Um, but the others all jumping very nicely, started the race well. 
OK, we've got some more social selections out of King of May being held up. We popped that one nicely. Zanza, all, all good so far. On the inside, the first colours of uh, J.P. McManus, the Philip Hobbs first ring, I think we said that. Dostal Phil, really impressive at Newbury on his comeback. Placed the last twice since then. Uh, Destrier on the inside, posting about fifth. This is typical Harry Skelton, right? Yeah, especially on a, on a ride like this, full of confidence. Try and get the box seat, go the shortest way around, and yeah, have everything in your favour. Dostal Phil, the interesting thing was the hood's been removed today, which might bring about... An improvement in performance. Absolutely, yeah, and he, 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 the harder they go, the more he'll be running on at the end, I think. On the slopes, my selection's up there in second. Happy to see that at the moment. All about getting in a rhythm for him as well. Looking for the famous colours of Tim Leslie, Gaelic Coast on the inside for Team McCain. Uh, Zanza a little bit sticky, maybe out the back there, jumping frailties, uh, uh, frailties emerging potentially. Sayo absolutely winging his way through the pack at the minute. Ain't My Fault is up there as well. TC, Moon over Germany, how's he going? He was on the outside of the field. He made a slight mistake. I can't really see him in the middle of the pack, but uh, on the outside, I looks think. like Jordan Gainford's just nudging him along at the moment. As editor to Jeet opens up on the far side, Barry Orr, any real steamers in the market? Yeah, the one in front, editor to Jeet, 3.15. Now, had a Betfair SP of 12, 4.5, Destrier, and the Springer in the market, Grey Diamond, is into eight. He's sitting in second place at the moment. Just looking for the Gigginstown colours there. That would be Yam Matt, wouldn't it? Of course, Rachel Blackmore. She's coming away. It's on the slopes, just starts to fill the pinch slightly at the moment because editor Desheet is saying, catch me if you can. Do you think this is going to stay there, Posty? I think he's got an excellent chance pouring it on. Josh Moore as well. Massively underrated rider, Josh Moore. One of the best operators in the weighing room for me and very underused. You'll be getting excited now because Getaway Trump is doing what you are hoping. He's creeping, creeping closer. Yeah, he very much is. Uh, Harry Cobden's it's kind of he, he's given he's ridden him with space, trying to keep things simple, like not going to get interfered with throughout the contest. And yeah, travelling into it now as they turn in with three to jump. Yeah, okay, on the slopes then. Hopefully he's going to stick in there. We know he can do it. Frero Bamboo, really un unexposed. Also, Phoenicia Williams and Charlie Deutsch coming with the run as well. But it's all up front at the moment. Destrier just getting a little bit outpaced. Well, the gamble has got all sorts to do, all sorts to do. Look at the Dostal Phil still being ridden cold, but has he left it too late? As Sully Dock, one of Barry Orr's players, comes into it. What are we two out then? now guys and yep. this is not showing any signs of stopping at the two's moment on. two's on at the moment Grey Diamond in seconds on the slopes falls out of the screen Freru Bamboo is there can get away jump this is where it's crucial for get away jump Dostal Phil he's been ridden really cold hasn't he has he just left it too late this is all about the leader I think he must Three's have gone on. short yeah really short so let's hope he pops it up there for you and no, a few of you that won't help, that won't oh, help. I'll tell you what Dostal oh, Phil's Richie. absolutely flown that oh, Sunny Dock as well could this be a McManus 1-2 because Editor Dajit starting to fall in the hole they're coming up to the business end will he hang on Joshua hang Moore on. giving everything yeah he's saved just a little bit more I think isn't it Sunny Dock only going to come second the three ball clear Dostal Phil ridden cold gets up there Ferro Bamboo I think just held on on for fourth. What a finish in the red rum. Keep it simple. Up front. Must have been fit to flee that. Must have Place to be though. Like if you jump and travel, have a bit of boot round there. Like it, it is, it is a in this race especially. I, I seem to remember it, it's very difficult to come from off the pace. Phenomenal ride. In Phenomenal the side ride, of yeah. colours, of course, wasn't it as well? And just when it got into the, the, the final fence, tightened up slightly. You thought the JP at Manners Coast would come here, Barry Orr getting excited, but picked up again a little bit. What rise are we going to get for that? We're going to play it safe, TC, and say seven. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm going to say seven. <laughs> that's, that's the play it safe rule in the racing post. When in doubt, say seven. Nine to one winner. I know a lot of you were on that, our final race of the day. I'm tempted to say happy days, I won't. Uh, I would say unbelievable scenes that that just went off from the very start. I thought it was going to fold, actually, turning in. I thought they were mm. coming, mounting up. Slight disappointments. Destre never really going, was he? Nope. Just a bit flat. Just shows you can make all the plans in the world, but it, it, it means nothing at times. And yet, I mean, he, he, he never really looked the winner, did he? You know, as in he, no. he, he, from a long Perfect way. Perfect sit. Everything yeah. was right. Interesting finish from Zanza. Did you see him fly he's, down the outside? He's flown he took up. sixth. I think Michal Nolan's finished without his, his feet in the irons. Um, you'll see him now on the outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. What happened there? Yeah, you have to look back at the head-ons and that. He was hampered early as well. It looked like Destre Moore a little bit further to my eye there. Maybe a little bit rusty. That would be unlikely. But all smiles. Joshua Moore for Team Moore. Where will we see Goshen later on in the season? Will it be Punchers Town? That would be great, wouldn't it? And great to see the fallers up on their feet as well. Getaway Trump came there cruising, didn't he? Let's get a social on the screen. Got a feeling this is going to be an eye eye from Eden Ray. Nice and simple. Get in. Oh, it's easy when they win like that, isn't it? What a lovely, <laughs> lovely jumping performance that was. 
from the young seven-year-old editor. The paced horses, I think horses we're going to be seeing in these top two mile handicaps moving forward, solid form. Grey Diamond, the fact he was up there, chased our pace and fell off, you know, um, I, I, I think he ran. Fences. Yeah, I think he ran well. So did Ferrero Bamboo, to be fair. They were up there with the pace. They just couldn't live with the leader, who obviously produced a real nice effort today. Um, yeah. The two McManus horses also ran well. Dostal Phil especially. As for Zanza, he just you forget the feeling he might be one of those, might he? We, when, know, it, when it all clicks for him, he will romp home. But that's the problem, isn't it? Where you're, when you the follow a horse like that, you next time. Yeah, next exactly. time. You've got to keep the faith, have you? Yeah. Watch for him up at Perth or something like that. Yeah. When he, he'll probably you know, have an egg and spoon race and, and somehow get it wrong. But listen, absolutely brilliant scenes here this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Barry, you're back for uh, Friday and Saturday, of course. Yeah, I certainly am. Who's on with you? Dave. We've got Maddie Batch and Keith tomorrow, and then on oh, Saturday, cool. Ross Briley making a return into the into the studio. And Keith Melrose, the betting editor, staying on for the Saturday at the Grand National as well. No, nothing cool. crazy now, Barry. Enjoy the Masters tonight. Don't crack it in those desperados now. No, no, I'm leaving them alone till Saturday night after <laughs> after Annabelle Five wins the uh, national. He had his first drink. He, he had his first drink after he won the Gold Cup with Manella Indo. We didn't see him for three weeks after that. <laughs> The deputies came rolling in. Great to have Barry Orr back. Charlie Post, thanks for joining us this week. Pleasure. It's been great fun. Your point to pointing on Saturday. Owners yeah. allowed back on course. Owners allowed back. Hosting the live stream from Mollington. Boom. Fantastic. Mm. It really has picked up that, hasn't it? It's gone, like, technology-wise. It used to be just, you'd be lucky if you... Yeah, uh, do you know, it's brilliant to showcase a sport. They're streaming it all, yeah. aren't they? It's yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you see some good racing, maybe see some future stars and some, some old favourites, yeah. Brilliant. Enjoy that down there. TC, thanks for coming back and joining us. Got heated at one point, didn't it? Lively debate. Uh, yeah, Dad Barry Orr. He, uh, <laughs> Barry Bohr, I'm going to call him from now on. Barry Bohr. But, um, yeah, he, he had a word. But uh, yeah, look, <laughs> only one winner on the card today. But uh, I've got one for Keeneland, if, you, if you're interested. Oh, of course, of course. Oh, you go. This is where... This is... Race 6 Keeneland, 8.51, horse called Southern District, ran really well at Goldstream on debut for Chad Brown. Chad Brown runs his good horses at Keeneland, um, I think 11-4 to 4 at the moment. Let's hope, yeah, OK, no Barry Bohr in that race. All right, great stuff. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow, same start time, 2pm, for the Friday.